And now, it's that time of the week once again. Welcome to the Departure Lounge Podcast with your hosts, Tom Whittle and Steve Waldridge. Your ticket to the home of aviation podcasts. Sit back, relax, and enjoy the flight. Welcome to the Departure Lounge podcast here on the Departure Lounge YouTube channel and Visions Aviation. I uh, hope you're all doing well on this Sunday evening. Uh, my name is Tom Whittle for the evening. We're going to go straight into it because we've got quite a few people to bring on. So uh, firstly, uh, we'll introduce our wonderful co-host for the evening, Steve Waldridge. Hopefully your internet holds out. But Steve, good evening. How are you? Yeah, hello. Hello, Tom. Hello, everyone at home. I hope you're we're all doing well tonight. It's um, it's a pleasure to be here for what is going to be another very, very good show. Yeah, another one I'm, I'm really looking forward to. Uh, yeah, I, I pray to God that my computer doesn't switch itself off. The internet will work. That'd, that'd be absolutely lovely for this show, but I don't chickens, that's for sure. No, absolutely not. Have you had a decent week? Uh, yeah, I, I went to a, a, a comedy on uh, Friday. I, I say it was a comedy night. Unfortunately, you can see why they're playing the low pub and they're not at the Apollo just yet. But <laughs> you got to start somewhere, I suppose. And then, yeah, I've just spent most of the weekend drinking cider, which is pretty much what we do down these parts. So, yeah, I can't can't moan at all. What about yourself? Not too bad. Very busy. But, yeah, not too bad. Not too bad at all. But we'll jump into that a little bit later. So, Steve, for now, we're going to say goodbye to you as we bring uh, everyone else on. Okay. Uh, also uh, joining us this evening, um, I, I should be prepared for this, but I will be now. It is, of course, Ian Hartley. Ian, a very good evening to you. How are you on this Sunday um, evening? Very well, thanks, Tom. How are you? All right. Very well, thank you. Yeah, very well, very well. How was uh, how's your week been? It's yeah, it's been all right. Uh, not really been up to much. Yeah, just an average week, really. I've not average really week. It. Nothing exciting, to be honest. So. Yeah, we'll go uh, for that. Yeah, we'll go yeah, for that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, excited for this evening? Yeah, looking forward to it. Really, I'm looking forward to it. Yeah, yeah. A couple of cracking guests on, so it's going to be really good. Should be good fun. Yeah, it should be Definitely, good fun. Yeah, yeah. Fantastic. All right, we'll get rid of you and uh, you. we'll bring you back shortly. <laughs> Joining us also this evening um, as one of our special, sort of special guests this evening, but he's returning to the show and I just realized I've not made a graphic for him but there you go he doesn't need one it's Ken Carr everyone <laughs> <laughs> good evening everybody <laughs> honestly god it's amateur stuff honestly uh good evening Ken how are you this evening yeah all right sir and how are you yeah not too bad thank you not too bad good to uh, glad to be back with us of course yeah I really enjoyed you can be it. honest <laughs> no no I really you know I really enjoy doing this it's, it's good fun good stuff how's how's your week been uh a bit stressful to be fair yeah We've got a new rescue dog, so trying to get used to him. You can probably hear in the background. Yeah. Um, <laughs> uh, my daughter Madeline's taking him out for a. We found a field where we can let him off the lead, so we thought we'd try and knacker him out, but it doesn't seem to work. <laughs> oh dear me! I suppose that's the problem. Right. That. <laughs> Fair enough. Fair enough. Uh, excited for this evening, Ken? Of course, yes. Yeah, yeah. Ready for some fun and laughter? We'll try and make it go a while so you can go on to your third bottle of wine as well. No, I'm on, on beer tonight. You thought. Oh, I'm, sorry, third bottle of beer then. <laughs> no, already, already done that. <laughs> already done that. Fair oh, we've had the Grand Prix, we've had football already on today. <laughs> <laughs> no better way to finish the evening. <laughs> exactly. Fantastic. Right, we'll, we'll get rid of you again and uh, we'll bring you back uh, shortly. Um, and lastly, joining us this evening, uh, we are very privileged to be joined by, um, I've got the moderator, there you go, moderator for Airlines Live and, of course, for Visions Aviation. It is, of course, the man known as Loopy. Loopy, good evening to you. How are you? Hi, Tom. 
Uh, thanks for having me. No, no problem. problem. How are you this evening? I'm good. I'm good. Excited to be part of this uh, one. Well, I say wonderful show, but yeah. <laughs> Yes, yes. Um, it, it's it's going to be different. It's going to be different. Different to what you're used to, I think. Uh, yes, yeah, just slightly, just slightly. But um, I'll warm up. To, I will warm up to it. Wonderful. Yeah, it'll be fine. It'll be absolutely fine. Yeah. I want to tell you, it'll be absolutely yeah. fine. Let's bring everybody back. There we go. Get that sorted out. There we go. So everyone, say hello to everybody. Hello, everybody. Hello. Hi. Everybody. Hi. Hello. <laughs> Fan. How are we all doing? All right. Yeah, all right. How do you be there, Aaron? <laughs> doing all right, thank you, my lovely. <laughs> <laughs> oh dearie me. It's gonna be one of those one of those shows, I think. Wonderful. So uh let's get on to some um uh, let's go with that. Right, yeah, let's get on to some housekeeping before we uh, jump into the show. So uh, we're on social medias. You can find them in the uh, descriptions below. We're on Facebook, Instagram, uh, Twitter, and, of course, Twitch, if you fancy um, <clears throat> giving us a little follow or a little subscribe on here. Um, <clears throat> we also have a shop running, which I'm just going to very quickly show because we released new merch, I think it was Thursday. I think, possibly. I might yeah, be wrong. Yeah, it was Thursday, yeah. Thursday evening, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Was Thursday. Uh, we decided to give Steve his very own T-shirt, as you can see. If I get rid of the graphics here, you'll be able to see that. So, uh, we've given Steve his very own T-shirt, which I absolutely love. <laughs> but there's also <laughs> some other bits and bobs and goodies on there as well. So if you fancy getting Steve on your chest, uh, you can find it on the shop, which is in the description uh, below as well, if you fancy uh, supporting uh, the channel. Just quickly get rid of that and bring everybody back in. Uh, also, we're running something a little bit different now, which is uh, we're running uh, Super Chats. Um, so if anybody wants to have their comment prioritized uh, and read out uh, above everybody else's, uh, you can, of course, uh, contribute with a Super Chat. It doesn't have to be much. There's no limit to it. Um, you can literally um, put a pound in to have your comment read. Um, <clears throat> sort of above everybody else. It's just a little something that we're doing. Um, it's there if you fancy it. Uh, also, <clears throat> if you wish to be a guest on the show, do uh, consider giving us a message on any of the social medias that you uh, find in the descriptions below. And we'll get you on the show as soon as we can. So, um, quickly run through some of the comments here. So, hide your APUs. Jack Rolls is in the house. He says, let's go, baby. Yeah, the show is here. Uh, Jim Gemmel is saying, evening, folks. If you want to say evening back, Jim, that'd be nice. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, good evening, Jim. <laughs> I, was just gonna say, I, yeah, I was, I was, I was thinking something now. I I <laughs> <laughs> uh, airliners live are in the house. They say, Lucy, we are all counting on you. Bing bong. <laughs> uh, Liz uh, Liz Shanahan on Facebook says good evening. Good evening, Liz. Uh, good evening. Sarah, who's also watching, says evening as well. Hi, Sarah. Um, interesting name, this one. Fun things to do with Tech Sparky says good evening. I found you from Airliners Live. So thank you very much for joining us this evening. Oh, yeah, thank you very much. Yeah. <clears throat> Jack Rolls says Steve's had a haircut. Is this true or false? <clears throat> um, well, the good news and the bad news is I was out with um, a lady this afternoon, so I had to spruce up the business. She's my sister-in-law, so um, I just kind of <laughs> answer <the> question. <laughs> oh, dear me. <clears throat> there you go. That answers the question. Uh, Benji Jenkins says, hello, Tom. I, I know Benji from uh, previous uh, channels, so evening to you. Good to see you here. Um just literally going to go with any comments we can here. Rock and roll from Jake with two carrots in his name. That's quite, quite, quite interesting. Uh, Gail Leary from Facebook. There's loads of comments here. Uh, says hi Tom and Ken, and obviously not you lot. Um, just, just me and Ken. Uh, um, let's see. I'm just literally going to go through. Um, Andrew Martin on Facebook. I had to bring this up because I know Jack Rolls is a West Ham fan. Shame about the hammers today, Loopy. Shut up, Spud. 
I have to be very quiet because I'm actually a Chelsea fan. So uh, <laughs> <laughs> I thought it would be a good idea not to talk about football. Yeah, so yeah, yeah. We're not, we're not talking about football. We're not going to talk about football. We won't talk about football. We won't do it. Uh, Jack Rolls with the first super chat of the evening with one pound seventy nine says, "This is why the channel is the best. Love you guys. Thank you yeah, very much, Jack. That's very good. Cool. Cool. Oh, cool. So very, very kind." Um, yeah, quite. A, if I've missed any hellos and stuff, obviously we'll get through uh, most of the comments as we can uh, throughout the evening. So yeah, do keep getting them in. So tonight we are doing a live Q and A whilst having a general chit chat about aviation and everything to do with it. Um, now we'll kick start off with basically the first thing that I wanted to prioritise, which of course Ken was your A three eighty data file book, and of course um, I will get it up onto the screen shortly. Um, the preview to the uh, new uh, Heathrow magazine. Yeah, literally went to press uh, at lunchtime today, and thank you to Tom for noticing there's a bit of an error on the cover, which uh, <laughs> <laughs> I found out about, about six o'clock tonight, and it's been a bit of a mass panic seeing if we can get the printers to. Um, well, I've got, got a feeling they're probably not actually doing any work today, so fingers crossed. Anyway, I'll just bring it up on the screen. Yeah, there, don't worry, I'm going to hide this. <laughs> There you go. Uh, so this is what uh, this is what obviously people that buy your magazine will expect. Um, yeah. When did it come out? Uh, picking up Tuesday night. Tuesday night. Yeah. So this is what a really good do. turnaround. Ken, Ken, what was wrong with it? The price? No, I'm not saying it was embarrassing. Mate. I'm not saying. It was like, what, one of the pictures was wrong. That's all you need to know. <laughs> So tell us a little bit about what uh, what people that uh, buy the magazine can sort of expect. Well, basically, yeah, the, the idea of um, LHR is obviously it's all about the Heathrow um, past and present. To be fair, so there's a pretty substantial news section. Obviously, that varies issue to issue, um, depending on how many much news has been. Really, but that particular headline there is just fantastic news. Um, Obviously, the airport's been rock bottom for months and months and months and months. Um, and literally, uh, in March, they actually had their best ever um, month uh, since COVID hit. So that's really good news because they have been struggling. So anyway, so we have a news desk uh, items in it. It predominantly is basically mainly um, rare aircraft that have come to Heathrow, etc. And then we have a number of features throughout the magazine. This month's one is, as you see there, five decades of the BA 747s, which uh, Charles, my co-editor of the 380 book, has put together for me. And so it goes from the 100s right through to the 400s. And yeah, this is quite, there's some, some rather interesting photos in that, including the, um, the BA freighter. They, they did have, um, some seven four seven eight hundred freighters which they used and that article there which you've got going on there that's done by uh, Matteo mariano who's a um trained to be a pilot so he, he does kind of know his stuff or he's learning his stuff and um we've done a couple of features in this issue because of the the storms from a couple of months ago mm. uh, the first one explains how he throw deal with all bad weather situations and Matteo's done one from basically the pilot and the airline's point of view so we've got both sides of it, which is quite interesting oh yeah just remind us where we can get hold of this magazine there ken right uh, obviously you can get it direct from us uh visions international.biz but uh manchester you can get it at the r uh, at the uh tas shop at the rvp run my business park the aviation shop but heathrow you can get it from uh, aviation retail direct the three magpies pub the green man pub you can get it at brooklands and it was going to be this issue it's going to be the next issue now you'll be able to get it from wh smiths at the uh, terminals at heathrow which we're rather chuffed about. Oh, wow, um, yeah, absolutely. We, we ran out of time to really get that sorted for this issue, unfortunately, mainly because the A380 book has delayed me a bit, to be fair. Um, so hence the, the Heathrow mag's been a bit delayed. But, yeah, um, so we're, we're going to roll that out from issue 10, which is going to be sort of mid, mid June. Right, this graph here. Um, yes. This, this is... I thought I needed something for the magazine. This is from the magazine. And I wanted something to highlight kind of what happened. Now, the green columns there that you see, 
they're the number of movements so that's uh, arrivals and departures per per month yeah mm -hmm. well, obviously january 20 covid was just about being discovered wasn't it um february it starts to decline march you know, we, we kind of shut down what was it that third week of march and then by april it was just disastrous as you can see and then it made that little bit of a recovery um last summer up till uh october time and then we went into the um the second kind of a lockdown wave um over well yeah sort of, sort of december 20 through spring 21 and then we've all, obviously we kind of gave up with believing in covid because of the uh, jabs and travel got allowed a lot more and we had a nice steady kind of rise up until december mm. and then quite surprisingly january and february this year went started going down again they didn't expect that at heathrow but march as you can see if you look at that that graph you can see it's actually now higher than march 20 and they are reckoning that by the summer we'll be back to pre-covid levels it'll probably only last for the summer um period mm. it will be there and in the last i think it's about the last three weeks or so um they finally been having over a thousand movements a day which wow. happened for a long time mm. and if you yeah. so the base was 14 to 1500 normally pre-covid a day movement so it's getting back there so i think this summer for us lot enthusiasts there's going to be a lot of action at Heathrow. Whether mm. it carries on into the autumn and the winter, we're just going to wait and see. And just yeah, certainly in the last. So I was going to say, certainly in the last two years, I've probably been to Heathrow three or four times, when when we sort of legally been allowed or whatever. And yeah, we went um, February time. It was like unbelievably different from what's even the April before that, and then before that was sort of Decemberish time. And it was it was rotten. It was it was like going to Bournemouth. There was such huge gaps between the uh, between the arrivals compared to what it used it, to be. It wasn't so bad when they actually went because they went to single runway operations. Um, yeah, yeah. That, 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 so it didn't quite feel so bad when that was happening. When they went back to Jewel, I can't remember when they did that now. But and they went back to Jewel, and you, you really didn't notice it. I, I was filming there once one day, and it was like eighteen minutes before. Between arrivals, mm. it's just mad. Can I just, pick up, can I just pick up a point from airliners in the um, the comment? Um, they said there seems to be no explanation for the dip before March. Nothing changed rule wise, but Manchester saw the same dip in traffic. There seemed to be no reason. Yeah, and it, oh, yeah, no idea why. It just did. But those first two months of this year, just all of a sudden, it started dipping off again. Mm. And you think it might have been something to do with the fact that people you know sort of having had their jabs they're still not sure whether to travel or not because of the information they were being given just mm. wasn't brilliant i'm not sure because they were, they were traveling up until christmas mm. i don't know I mean, yeah. had a lot to do with it like yeah, I, I went to germany back in november and the, the red tape and paperwork and having to take this test and that test and all the bits of paper and that they me off and i'm and i'm obviously an aviation enthusiast and like the casual casual traveler probably couldn't be bothered with it to be, all, to be honest well to be honest uh, apart from the fact that my passports actually ran out in may 2020 but apart from that uh it's just all the thoughts of all these bloody tests and all the paperwork i just I had no desire to go anywhere really well not not abroad no. yeah it seems well, to tell you i got on a right old half of it and I oh got to god yeah, you're a mess oh. weren't you for a couple of weeks weren't you i think oh. i think like once boris johnson when once once he's he'd locked us all down and what have you and as soon as he said y you can start traveling again i think there was a massive weren't the massive rush to get these flights and everybody got away and then and then obviously it's going to peak and then all of a sudden things are going to start settling a little bit aren't they so that possibly could have had something to do with it now and then people are now starting to think maybe they, they, maybe they held back knowing full well that in April we're all going to get shafted with the <coughs> gas bills and all the rest of it. And then they're just looking forward to summer now. Instead instead of having two holidays a year now, they're just having one holiday a year just because of cost of living and things like that. So maybe, I don't know, there's plenty of reasons, isn't there, why it could have dipped off. But the, yeah. uh, but the, the positive thing is at least it's getting better. Um, you see that Manchester now, when like 
their line is live, we're saying then when you watch when you watch their show, comp- to watching it today compared to what it were like, I don't know, just before Christmas or whatever, you, the amount of traffic is it, it's you know it's unrecognizable to to what it was, which is fantastic news. It really is. Mm. And now it's opened the other runway as well at Manchester. That's that makes it. it even better. Yeah. Okay. yeah it's, it looks really, that, really that good. Footage the other day. That foot the other day of the 380 coming in at the golden hour was it first night or whatever it was absolutely astonishing the, the um emirates 380 into manchester yeah the emirates 380 yeah coming in yeah i think it was um yeah i think martin stood in the middle didn't he i've not seen that actual video yet but uh, i think he got it going over his head didn't he mm. Mm. Uh, yeah but yeah the, the one they did live was phenomenal well i love the 380 yeah. i don't have a that but yeah yeah, it's fantastic well, anyway. Yeah, it's really good. Well, like I say, we are here to uh, answer any questions that anybody has or literally, you know, if you want to ask myself, Steve, Ian, Loopy or Ken uh, a particular question, um, obviously do uh, do get them in and we'll, we'll get them answered throughout the evening. Although there is one question here that I think is quite important um, from the last time uh, that Ken was on. I feel like we need to answer the question. So it's from Jack Rolls. He says, I wonder if Steve has bought the A380 book yet because I believe... <laughs> I believe this was a promise from last week to say you'll have it in time for this week. Did you buy it, Steve? <clears throat> well, that's a no. Simple right? yes. <laughs> <laughs> here's, the hon- right, here's the honest truth. I went through it all and I put it in the basket. And because I'm a bit um, difficult when it comes to, to um, computers, now, it was asking me to pay on paypal and i didn't know how it worked so i got scared and so i'm gonna to have to redo it well, I threw it, but <laughs> Luke is showing his a little oh, bit I've scared by paypal right no you, you can pay by your card just go through the process as if you're paying by paypal it's just our stupid system you just carry on through and at the end it says do you want to pay by card or by paypal you say, okay why don't you just say that uh, right him, okay <laughs> yeah no that's so, fine yeah so yeah it's a question no but i did go with the best intentions that's a heart. I will do it right now. <laughs> no, not right now. You might see my card detail. <laughs> <laughs> That's fine. Uh, we're going to bring Loopy into this um, to give people who sort of might not know who he is uh, a bit of an opportunity to kind of get to know him. So, uh, Loopy, if you want to sort of tell people that sort of are tuning in for the first time and uh, are wondering who you are, just a little bit about yourself. Potted history of me. Okay. Um, <laughs> Born and raised in the east end of London, I still live in uh, in well, bordering East London and Essex. I'm in Romford at the moment. Um, I got lucky. Um, I met a bunch of guys. Um, it turned out to be Iron Maiden. Um, I ended up working for them for a total of seven years. Um, did quite a lot of travelling. Um, I mean, we used to do some mental flights. Um, like imagine, like flying on a lovely Thai seven four seven, and it was one of these bus services. Hmm. So we flew from London to Frankfurt, Frankfurt to Karachi, Karachi to Bangkok, Bangkok to Tokyo. Wow! Total flying times twenty six hours. Over, I think it was, it was at least like a two hour stop in each each airport. So. Hmm. And how yeah. many bottles of Jack Daniels was that? Um, <laughs> arms length. Right. <laughs> <laughs> um, that is, it's just mad, and it's sort of, you get to, get to somewhere like Narita Airport, and you've been sort of driven into Tokyo, downtown Tokyo, um, along a motorway that has got a barrier all down one side, so you can't actually see what's going on on the other side of it. it it's just bizarre we pulled up at the hotel and there were thousands of these screaming fans and we were all literally told just get out the van and run <laughs> and that's what we had to do it was like we had guards and it was it was mad but yeah lots of traveling um lots of it on seven fours um and back then i would have thought it was probably just the start of the 400s maybe the twos don't know but um, yeah, sort of battles and falls across the across the Atlantic. We did that so many times. Lost count. Yeah, and I've been on seven seven sevens, and then um, we did like the little jumps, you know, places like um, Helsinki, 
Jersey. Um, Battles of Force to Germany about three or four times. It, you know, I couldn't even tell you what we was on then because it's just so long ago. <laughs> 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 and, and, to be perfectly honest, we used to get, get to the airport three or four hours before our flights and you go to the bar. What else would you do? <laughs> so I was probably yeah. far too yeah. ridiculous to get on a on a plane, you know. But there you go. Yeah, very true. I, um, I smothered it well. <laughs> <laughs> so moving, uh, the, um, so going forward from that, how did you get into like the moderating side of things? Of course, can you moderate for Airliners Live and I believe for yourself, Ken, is it as well? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Yes, yeah, yeah. Well, well, we, we, we combined our groups, didn't we, at some point, Loops? Coming we out. did. Yeah, basically, um, I mean, it goes back when me and Ken first met, uh, we used to watch uh, Jerry at, um, I've forgotten. You can mention uh, it. No, I don't have to censor it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you can edit it out. Yeah, I'll edit it out. Yeah. Right? <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, yeah, we met through that. And then, um, I mean, I had my own aviation channel uh, called Lucas Aviation. Ken had the his channel. And I thought, well, what's, what's the point, you know? we don't actually need to have the two of us so we just merged channels and became visions international and um i, I used to do uh i managed to see got figure out how to set a few bits and pieces up on um on youtube for him and there was myself set up as a mod and i think matty smith was on there from airliners and um huh okay <laughs> You're not supposed yeah. to react to that bit, Luke. Yeah, don't react to that. It's the name. It really is. <laughs> um, yeah, um, no, yeah. Yeah, so anyway, I'd, um, doing bits and pieces um, for Ken. And then um, I was on, uh, I was also like a Patreon on um, Airliners Live. And Things started to go sort of seriously wrong for me like financially, and I said, said to Martin, I'm going to have to have to come out. You know, I, I can't afford to do this anymore. And he said, Don't worry about that. We'll make you a mod. And it was like, Oh, are you sure? Okay. But um, I've, I've sort of got into that now, and um, I, I thoroughly enjoy myself. I, I did actually say that to the guys today. That uh, it's, it's such a such a, a it's a good time. It, you know. You're dealing with a lot of people. Uh, to, I mean, today we had 4,000 people at one point. Wow. And when you've got that amount of people in the chat, and the chat is whizzing past, but you've still got to try and keep up with it. There's no bad... No, no, it's, it's, it's no surprise that I'm getting bad eyesight <laughs> because my eyes are just going <laughs> up. Yeah. Down. I want to say it's, like, it's incredible, but uh, it's just a lot of good, good fun. Yeah. It's a lot of good fans. Yeah, no, it's an unfortunate. Yeah, so few, uh, so few comments. It's fine. So few. Yeah. It's real. You did. <laughs> 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 yeah. thing is, Ken, I, I did actually say to you a while back. You know, uh, we, we need to stream more. Mm. You know, to get the numbers up, and you know, you can only do one thing at a time. So, good to see you, mate. Yeah, there's no no rush in in this sort of game, is there? Really, no. in terms, you know, unless you're sort of seeking. Seeking the success that you know you, you kind of want, but you know, for a lot of people, I think it's kind of if you're doing it as a hobby more than a you know a business, then you just literally you, know, you do it at your own pace, don't you? You don't just yeah. um, you know, yeah. go out and seek it. I mean, you, 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 you do get, uh, I mean, I've noticed on um, on other streams, I'm not going to name any of them, but um, I noticed where like the, the mods are not taking any notice. Of the chat at all, yeah. So of course the chat are getting away with absolute murder. <clears throat> On our stream, we um, you know, we, we just don't tolerate any any crap. Yeah, yeah. It's yeah. That's it. Unfortunately, you'll always get one or two, won't you? In, in any walk of life, they're on these sort of things. So yeah, you're actually doing a good job to weed them out before they get seen in the main. You know, you know what we found when we did that? Um, this, this was really quite interesting. When we did that um, Biden thing, 
on the actual day or at the, when we were live, I think I can't remember. It was might have been ten thousand, might have been even less by the time we got to the pub after the second stream and watched it. And we thought, okay, that's fine, blah blah blah. And then what happened was we'd noticed a few comments that needed to be deleted. And I'm going to the monster, I'll delete that, delete that. Anyway, by the time we drove home to Essex, about 90 minutes later, we were on like 40,000. And there's mm. all these comments coming up. And my mod guide, <coughs> he was Matthew Harris, is on, on here now, he's watching. I remember him going, oh, I've deleted this, I've deleted that, I've deleted this. I said, and we were just going through, and it was just funny in the end. You know what I mean? He's picked oh, you sad leaks, blah, blah, blah. And we just left it in the end. Yeah. And what that well, does is it gets you loads and loads of views. <laughs> because, <laughs> because as soon as they comment, somebody else comes in, their mate, it's brilliant. It's just like, actually, yeah. because this whole viewership thing of live streams is rubbish. It's based mm. on three second views, right? Yeah. So, you know, you might have a thousand views, but they might watch the whole three hours, or you might have 30,000 views, they watch three seconds. That's it. So, only yeah. when you get into the analytics that you actually. Um, you actually, sorry, the dog's just nicked Madeline's bag. <laughs> <laughs> right down the shop. <laughs> but no, so, so this whole thing is <clears throat> not actually, and I'm not, I'm not trying to put down their lives, not at all, because, you know, they're, they're, you get your concurrent views going, but when you look deeply into it, I know you say, you think, okay, it's only three seconds, and it counts. We've had 164,000 views. Mm. Yeah, it's... It's a strange one, but the, the thing is, as, as Loopy was talking about the moderating side of things, there's a lot of uh, comments that are coming in, including from Airliners Live, who say, we couldn't do it without you, mate, in every show, um, and so much time for us, you are a star. Mm. Bing bong. That's it, yeah, so that, that's it. I just said, it's concurrent views is the important thing, but that yeah. isn't actually what shows up on um, on your thing, do you know what I mean? Like yeah. our Biden thing was, I think it got to nearly half a million or something stupid. And you just know that it's just like, nah. <laughs> no, it's, it. <laughs> it's funny. Yeah, as I say, there's, there's lots of uh, lots of love coming in from, especially from uh, Mrs. Airliner's life, uh, saying that you do a great job. Um, Thank you, Jim. Ingle says that you uh, are an amazing mod. Uh, Visions and airliners are lucky to have you. Oh, it's like turning into a love right now, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> okay. Be one of those uh, trying, uh, one of those love triangle things. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> if only Jeremy Kyle was still around. Um, <laughs> yeah, <right. laughs> oh, yeah, <laughs> and I was live then popping in to say that Luke is the only one of us that hasn't accidentally banned anybody yet. <laughs> <laughs> Although that's probably put the knockers on it. Yeah. But yeah, there's a lot, yeah, there's yeah. a lot of love coming in for for the moderating side of things. Um, uh, things like I must admit, because can I just say, because <coughs> oh, the, the airliners. Um, streams on YouTube that that does fly through, doesn't it? Mm. How you keep yeah, it time, yeah. relaxing, mate? Yeah. I mean, uh, luckily, yeah, on a good day, there's two of us. No, <laughs> I mean today it started off. It was only me because Matt, Matty was on the other side. <coughs> and then Jen, I was actually a moderator in the early days for airliners. Actually, I, I think I go I back to those there. days. <laughs> yeah, I go back to those days. <laughs> yeah. I remember. Yeah. But, um, I remember actually editing up some vi videos for, for Martin on uh, YouTube. But again, I've just got two bits of my own business. Nice little, yeah, yeah. nice little bit of reminiscing right now going on. Oh, right. Sorry, yeah, yeah, back, yeah. back in the day. Back yeah, in I the used, day, yeah. Yeah, back yeah. in the day, I used to dream for a certain company, but there you go. Um, <laughs> well, we'll quickly move on because I feel, yeah, we're saying it. So Gail Leary on Facebook is asking us a question. It says, to you all. Uh, what has been your favourite flight slash airline to date? And I'm going to go with Ian first. My favourite airline. Favourite oh. airline or favourite flight? Oh. Or maybe both. We'll answer both. Airline first and then, yeah. Ken's going to disappear for two seconds. I don't know. I really, I really, really couldn't really answer. My, my favourite airline? I don't know. I mean, I'm going for looks now, aren't I? So I'd say something like, Oh, no. Can you come back to me? I was going to say, probably the worst person yeah. to go to first. Probably, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. 
<laughs> All right, Lupi, we'll go with you. Uh, favorite airline or, fa- or favorite flight to date? Um, favorite flight would have to be from um, Heathrow to the Bahamas, just simply because of the destination. Um, airline, British Airways, without a doubt. Well, the service is just phenomenal. Fantastic. Yeah, Steve, over to you. Yeah, I know, I know what everyone's thinking here, but I'm going to go for the 380 flight, but it's not. The um, the landing into London City when I flew in from Milan will take some beating. You're flying like eye level with Houses of Parliament and all these famous monuments, and as we all know, London City is a, a tricky little airport to get into, so that was absolutely fantastic. And 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 uh, again, like Loopy said, BA, that, that flight was phenomenal because there was meant to be... 35 biz passengers and they never showed up so we all uh, got to spread out and got to uh, feast on all the food that had been prepared for those so british wow. airways in uh, london city that that flight was unreal yeah, top, top notch top yeah. notch uh ian have you thought about it yet or do you need more time no not really i mean well I mean, i've only ever done holiday flights really so I wouldn't have really have a favourite airline, but if I could choose a favourite airline, I would probably go for something like Emirates or something like that, who I'd like to fly with. You know, I'd love to have a first-class experience. We we Emirates uh, are watching Jeb Brooks and, and someone like Air France or something like that, on you know, like their uh, premier lounges and things like that. I'd like to do something like that. So um, I, think, I think for luxury and comfort, I think I'd choose someone like Emirates. Okay, I think. Yeah, I had a look. Their of... first class package was seven thousand pound return. If you ever fancy doing one of those Emirates first class lounge jobs, oh, let's start saving up now. Yeah, I should start get saving up now. You'd be gone by Christmas. <laughs> yeah, Christmas yeah, yeah. Two thousand twenty-seven. Mm. <laughs> Brilliant. Uh, for me, I think quite. I think for me, quite easy enough. I've mentioned it on a few occasions. It's probably um, when I flew the old Flyby from Newquay to London Gatwick. Um. Not quite as glamorous as, as uh, um, you know, Bahamas or anywhere else. But uh, for me, it was it was quite a quite a decent flight because the crew on the crew on board were, were fantastic, and you know, even though it was a short flight, they they definitely looked after you. So, yeah, for me, um, favorite yeah favorite flights of the, with, with the old flybe. In terms of favorite airline, um, it's a tricky one because I I don't know really. I mean. I used to like the old British Midlands, but yeah, um, can't really tell. Maybe Air Portugal. There you go. Air <laughs> Portugal. Yeah, tap Air Portugal. Yeah, yeah the, with the old lover, it's fine. Yeah, yeah, no problem with that. Yeah, that's fine. <laughs> Everyone's having a quick two seconds and disappears, so it's fine. It's a good thing we've got a lot of people here. Uh, <laughs> Uh, Hydra APU's Jack Roll says Tap is Ian's favourite without a doubt. Obviously, we all know about your love of Tap Air Portugal, Ian. And as yeah. we mentioned last night, we always have this like uh, sort of scale to where yeah. what airline would you change your camera battery for if it was coming in? And, and, and for you, it's easily Tap Air Portugal. Yeah, absolutely, like every time. Yeah, every yeah. Even if my battery wasn't running running down, I'd still change it. <laughs> Let's <laughs> <laughs> find a reason to. Deary me, deary me. Uh, funny. Uh, well, question from Airliners Live. Oh, you're probably inside joke. Uh, question for Loops. When's the A380 due? Um, I'll type the command. <laughs> I've, I've actually got three commands for the uh, for the A380. And the only time I've ever used one of them, it says, unfortunately, the A three eight is already departed for today. Uh, tune in on the next show to catch it. The only time I've actually used that was uh, when we were doing a live from Lanzarote. <laughs> <laughs> oh God! Yeah, um, the answer is actually at uh, five past twelve. There you go. There's your, there's your answer. I know it's a joke, but yeah, there's your answer. <laughs> it's a true answer, though. <laughs> <laughs> Brilliant. Uh, so, as we can see in the background, uh, Loopy, we can see some model aircraft and stuff. And I believe we, we, we were talking yesterday. Um, 
in regards to you've you've made a Ravel kit of the Ed Force One seven four seven. Let me back up a little bit. I'm just expecting the entire shelf just to come down. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah. Oh, the shelves are better made than the aircraft. <laughs> <laughs> so there we go. Um, oh, this is a little chap. Yeah, there we go. Loopy's uh, 747 Iron Maiden. And of course, uh, the, the very plane that wore that livery went into Kemble. Um, this week for yeah. scrapping. Um, having such a sort of association, uh, Loopy, with Iron Maiden, um, when you sort of noticed that the 747 had gone into Kemble for, you know, potentially its last, well, obviously its last flight, uh, did it have like a bit of a sentimental value to it in terms of like being associated with like Iron Maiden and that? Um, well, because and I only found out yesterday. Yeah. Um, it was a bit of a surprise, actually. I, I thought, you know, considering how young the aircraft was, I thought I might get a bit more use out, or somebody mm -hmm. might have. Um, mm -hmm. I know that the um, TFAAK went to uh, went to Saudi Airlines after Maiden had had it. I mean, they, they got it from Air Atlanta Atlantic, so, mm -hmm. but of course, leased. Um, mm -hmm. But uh, yeah, never got to see it up close. I'd see it in the distance. And that's, that's as close as I ever got. And yeah, uh, yeah beautiful aircraft, but um, what do you do? Yeah, um, Jack Rolls popped in the chat earlier on about it. We were fortunate enough to see it at Bournemouth mm. a couple of times in the last sort of eight weeks or so. And yeah, it's just phenomenal to see, obviously, 747s at a, in what is essentially a regional airport, but particularly that one with it with its history. And that's uh, it's phenomenal. It's a, it's a real shame as the industry's getting rid of these um iconic aircraft more readily these days. I think, mm. only, it, I think Maiden had already made up their minds that uh, logistically they they you know they weren't going to well certainly they're not going to use a seven four seven again. Um, I, no, that's it. I'm not going to say that they'll rule out um, maybe going back to a, a trustworthy seven five. I, I don't know, but. Um, Loops, haven't they just done a, a Netflix thing and they've got their own, they've got literally everything on the same plane or something? I saw a trailer the other day. What, on the 75? I don't know, I, I, actually, you know, I didn't actually know what the plane was, but they had they had the whole crew, um, the band and all the equipment on one plane. Yeah, the, the way it worked was that um, they took out a whole bunch of rear seats. So basically, yeah, you've got, right, got yeah. the captain's cabin um, and they took out a couple of rows at the front there. So you've got the captain's cabin, two rows missing, a whole bunch of seats, probably about 10 deep and what was it? Uh, how many seats across? Six? On a seven five? Is it a centre aisle? I don't know. Anyway, yeah, um, and then basically behind that 10, 10 rows of street uh, seats, they stripped out everything. And the way it worked out was that anything that they could fit through the door, they was they would fit on the plane. And yeah. uh, so it meant that uh, rather than Steve have um, his full speaker stack, he ended up only using one. Uh -huh. and it was the same, same as three guitarists. Obviously, like the drum kit was, was sort of packed down as like small, smaller uh, drum boxes. And yeah, it was, um, it, it was just bizarre. The, the fact that they could actually sort of do that. So I've actually made a note, right? That they did it first of all on the Somewhere Back in Time tour, and I'm I'm not sure when that was. That was about seventy. Probably Somewhere Back in Time. Yeah. <laughs> oh, <laughs> God. Um, that would have been mid nineties, um, and that was on a seven five seven registration G dash uh, O J I uh, yeah O J I B, mm. and then they did the Final Frontier tour, which. Um, uh, finished in 2010 and that was on g dash strx and they were both released from a company called australia which obviously not bruce flew with so it was obviously like easy to get hold of yeah so not many people would have known that um uh, bruce dickinson was also a 
an actual airline pilot. I think it was Astraeus, wasn't it? The airline. Yeah, that the, the yeah, yeah. So he actually yeah. flew um, in his sort of spare time, whatever he had for um, for Astraeus as well, flying people. Well, when, when, when Maiden used to finish the tour, I mean, when Maiden used to go out on tour at the time. They, they were going out as sort of around about 12 months, nine to 12 months at a time. And then they'd come off the road for about nine months. Three months of that would have been taken up recording an album. So basically, Bruce had six months to, to go out and do what he wanted. And uh, yeah, you know, when with Australia, he, he became a commercial pilot and did a lot of the holiday runs. Yeah, amazing. And it's amazing yeah. if you flew on Australia, uh, uh, you know, while they were around and stuff, and you know, there was a good, very good chance that he was the one that took you to your holiday destination. So it's yeah, it's you know, for a lot of people that flew with Australis, um it's it's something to kind of consider as well. Another short lived airline, of course, um here in the UK. One of those things. But um yeah. the funny part about it is that going back to the book that our young friend there, uh, Ken mentioned, Thunderthuck, um, this book features various amounts of air travel and the pilot on every flight is Bruce Dickinson. So, anybody <laughs> wants to find out more, go and get the book. Hmm. Yeah, it's available visionsinternational.biz. It's called Thunder Thuck. Don't spell it wrong. And it's there. You just go to the shop and it's there. Yeah. So, so Lupi, where, you where did your. Hang on, when it's on. Well, yeah, time. yeah. <laughs> Lupi, where, where did your passion for aviation come from? Is it something that you picked up while you was on tour with Maiden? And, uh, Funny enough, you no, always had? my dad took me to uh, Biggin Hill, 1963, to see an air show. Yeah. And got Spitfires. What a phenomenal aircraft. And you got this thing sort of flying really low over the, over the crowd's head. I mean, I was down there somewhere, you know. But um, yeah, that's where it all started, and then yeah. I've sort of followed aviation. I mean, I'm not closely because you know, like for twenty odd years, I was extremely busy in the music business, and then spent another twenty years at the Royal Mail. <coughs> so you don't really get a chance to um, deal with aircraft all that much. But it, yeah. it's been more since I've retired. I've, I've sort of started picking up again, and that was yeah. uh, 2016. Yeah, yeah. So, so it's something that's been just the back of your mind, hasn't it, all that time? And Always. Now you've got the time to appreciate it and do Always. it a little bit more. You do I mean, it, I've, you? I've also had a, like, a fascination um, for space. Okay, right, yeah. Space travel. Um, currently thoroughly enjoying what uh, SpaceX are up to. Mm. Yeah. Can't wait yeah. to see more, but um, uh, we'll see. I, I think it, the space well, travel has got too so slow. Right, I'm, I'm going to say totally off subject. I'm a bit like I'm a bit of a space geek myself, and I've, I've been reading a little bit and watching like documentaries and stuff on Black Knight. You know, Ooh, they, yeah. they call it the Black Knight satellite, don't they? From, uh, but what's your what's your opinion on that? I know it's totally off topic, but just out of interest. Is this the new the new one they're talking about? No, the old the old Black Knight. Um, it's sort of a, an object. What's been like? Pictured in, like you know, into in, they call it the Black Knight satellite, aren't they? And there's a lot of conspiracy theories about it and what have you. No, I think it's something, it's something. It's something you'd have to look up. I think Ken knows what we're on about. It's um, that's why he's scarped. I mean, yeah. I, 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 I like uh, oh, I'm not getting into this. Uh, I, know. I, I watch, I watch a lot of like ancient aliens and conspiracy theories yeah. and stuff like that. And this Black uh, Knight features right. quite a bit into it, so. Yeah, I was just thinking. Well, did you know? Up. Did you know that Campbelltown, up in Scotland, was actually classed as the UK's uh, Area Fifty One? Right, and I wasn't aware of that. Yeah, that yeah. Right? Campbelltown. It's um, it's mm. going up the east coast, uh, up way above Glasgow. I don't know. I thought it was somewhere called Bonnie something in Scotland. Not Bonnie Scotland, obviously, but that's too obvious. <laughs> I think it was Campbell. I thought it was Gavin B. Uh, do, 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 yeah, I think it's, you're it's, right. It's, it's actually known it? now as Campbelltown. I mean, it's, oh, right, it's okay, right, one yeah, flight yeah. a day. Yeah, if that, and that's private. One. <laughs> 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 I'm just going to ask you. Go on, go on, when you 
touring and that, did it ever get like a bit much sort of upheaval when being in a different city, different time zone, almost just every day of the week? Can Never that? really know. I mean, the, the inside of venues, like when, when you're doing the bigger venues, the inside of these places all look pretty much the same. It's, it's the dressing room area is sort of rearranged slightly different. So what we um, what we found was that you travel overnight, so you're sleeping, and then you wake up as a new venue, although it looks like yesterday's, but backstage is different. But you, you, you kind of sort of know where you are because people put posters up everywhere. You know, like today yeah, you yeah. are in, and it, it, we used to put them on the uh, on the drum riser as well, like so that uh, if the singer's coming up the drum riser to get a drink. Right on the corner of the drum riser, it'll tell you Birmingham following day, Liverpool. You, know, you, you had to do that. So he could go back to his microphone and go, Good evening, Birmingham. You know, it's not like because you're so smashy, you need to know something. Well, <laughs> roughly, you know, <laughs> certainly up the crew. Hang on, we're in Birmingham. I know a good pub. <laughs> <laughs> but um, yeah, I mean, it was. Um, it can be very, very hard work. It can be very, very hard work. But um, you get used to it. You get used to the hours. You get used to the fact that you're only going to get two or three hours sleep. You get up the next day. You do exactly what you did the day before. It's routine. And if you get that, get yourself into that routine, it, it becomes easy. Yeah, I suppose right enough. When they sort of living in airports and that becomes second nature at a point. Do you know, is it, Things were actually organised fairly well in that respect. We didn't actually spend that much time hanging about in airports. Mm. In the early days, though, when it loops in the back of a transit, there's a problem. We had a, <laughs> yeah. we had an old uh, green green line red no it was a green red line lorry, an old GMC thing. Wow. And, um, <laughs> and we uh, we called it the Green Goddess, and um, one of our guys, uh, Vic. And Pete, now two of our guys, yep, one, two, um, they managed to sort of build a section at the front of the front of the vehicle. So you uh, you go in, you've got three bunks on your right hand side, two bunks lower down, and then the main bunk went right the way across the driver's cab. And then they also put these two windows in the front. So we used to get between sort of four or five of us sleeping out the top like sort of above the above the cab and um we uh, we went to um we were on our way to uh do this gig in uh, newport in quint <coughs> and uh we're going down the M m4 and realized we're taking the wrong turning so whoever was driving decided to do a u-turn through the cones on the m4 and go back the other way Anyway, this police car came from nowhere. He pulls up in front of us. And these two old Bill get out, big old boys, you know. You taking the wrong turn, you know, you shouldn't have done that, blah, blah, blah. And he was just about, I don't know, whether to clap the, the uh, handcuffs on the driver or, or sort of give him a ticket or whatever. But he looked up to these five faces peering out of these two windows above the cab and went, anyway, on your way. <laughs> just let us go. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's, quite it's just the way it was. So there were no fancy Winnie bagels or anything like that then? Uh, not in this country. No. 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 Not with a new comma camper van or anything like that? No. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, I mean, we, we spent probably about a year driving around this old green goddess and then, then the band got signed and uh, things started taking off so therefore they would um they 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 their money set aside for a coach or a private minibus mm -hmm. you know that, that kind of yeah. stuff and it was around about that time that sort of like the, the crew sort of went one way and the band went the other with the yeah. band traveling on their own up to that point you know we'd, we'd all been pretty much together yeah mm -hmm. yeah 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 so I, I was thinking about going back to when you were talking about like when the um did the seat configuration in the plane and things like that how many were there of you including you, you know yourself and all rest well, of you that was that was way way after i'd already left but 
um, at the time uh, there would have been approximately 26 crew uh, and then you probably got around about four or five management um, and then you got six members of the band so right. you, you know, you're talking sort of about 40 people in total yeah, because most of the time, you wouldn't see that now, would you? Yeah, Some of these modern bands now, you won't see anything like that now, would you? Yeah, Fight Hands is not there anymore. No, no. But, um, plus, the fact, like, you know, all right, I openly admit that I downloaded a few bits and pieces myself, but that really is killing the industry. Mm. That really is killing the mm, industry yeah. because. You know, people are not selling records anymore. No, no. But then the dark thing is, they're quite happy to give their stuff to Apple to sell it for them. Mm. Yeah. You know, it, it's, what do you want? Mm. You know, now, how do they make money now, Loops? I, I don't get it. Touring and merch. Yeah. It, it's funny, I, I was in Asda today, and when I was walking down the, um, like the entertainment aisle, if you will. Uh, I'm looking at CDs because Chili Peppers have a new CD out, so I was looking at that. <laughs> and some of these, some of these, no, but some of these CDs now. Were you in the veg aisle? I beg your pardon. Were you in the veg aisle? <laughs> <They're only laughs> chili Peppers. Uh, <laughs> I had to Google someone, uh, someone recent, make himself sound cool. That's <laughs> yeah, that's what we were, yeah. yeah. Well, I, I was like Des O'Connor or someone. Well, Elvis Presley, but they never had any. No, seriously, but I was saying that the actual hard copies, I mean, you don't see it, well, if you have like a little, a, a few LPs now to say sort of came back in and phased back out again, but hard copies of any CD or anything like that, they're knocking them out for a couple of quid. Yeah. And like the new releases are a tenner, and then they're only a tenner for a few weeks, and then they go down into the bargain bin straight away, and they're yeah. knocking them out for a couple of quid just to shift them. So well, like you say, it's all through Apple now. Cassettes are coming back. Oh, are they? What? Yeah. That is the latest thing, cassettes. And of course, who's releasing them? Sony. You're going to need a cassette player. You've got to go and buy a Walkman. Thanks. Oh, yeah. I'm hanging on for my hair haircut to be back in fashion. Can't be too long. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I can't comment, Steve, but it's older than a Walkman. <laughs> uh, I've still got my earth style. It's in the box in my bedroom. All right, Loopy's just going to disappear very quickly, but Loopy will be back while he disappears. Uh, we'll quickly get back onto the topic of aviation. <laughs> um, but we'll go for that. So we'll say hello to a few people that have joined us. There's a lot, lot of comments. A lot of comments, isn't there? A lot of comments, even. Yeah, lots of comments coming in. So uh, let's have a look here, see who we have here. So um, Onkar Singh says hello. Hey, Onkar. So hey, Onkar well, is there. So yeah. hello to Thumbs you. Up from me as well, yeah. Um, I know Darren Smith said hello, but I'm going to put this comment hey. up because I know he's here. So hello to Darren Smith. And Jim Gemmell, obviously. Yeah. And Jim Gemmell, yes. Yeah. Um, we'll ask that question that Jack Rolls has asked once Lupi is here. Um gonna go through literally i know we've seen um a330 pilot herself uh transatlantic oh, allison is here hi hey, guys sorry i'm late mm. so uh, welcome back. Hope you're doing well. Thank you. yeah. typical bloody uh, pilot yeah just yeah. quickly i've been loving instagram stuff recently for your travels looks looks phenomenal <clears> i'm so <throat> pleased to see you back in the cockpit and, mm. and doing what you yeah, love fantastic. again so uh, uh rob brown Rob Brown playing spot says evening troops. Hope all is well. Your end been chasing down a NATO C seventeen. Nice, fantastic. He's also put a right. comment in, Steve, uh, Tom, rather, if you don't mind me mentioning that he's uh, just reached a thousand uh, subs on his uh, YouTube as well, which is fantastic well as well. Yeah, so that's fantastic. Well Rob. done to you. Yeah. yeah, well done. Well done to you. Um, so yeah, so what we do is just while. Um, Oh, yeah, let me get rid of that. Uh, all right, well, here we go then. So Jack Rolls says, a uh, question for you, Ken. Have you seen the Ryanair Max uh, Max 8 yet? We finally got one after speculation at Bournemouth. Um, now, every time Jack says this to me, I say go to Stansted and then come back to me and we'll talk. Mm. Um, obviously, Ken, uh, you've done a few streams at Stansted, so do you want to say the same thing to him? <laughs> pretty much, yeah. <laughs> yeah, pretty much, yeah. 
Go to Stansted. Yeah, you come to yeah, Stansted, you'll see loads of them, mate. Yeah. yeah. Oh, you've just seen one at Bournemouth. Cute story, bro. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Show us a picture honest, of him, Jack. By the, time you, by the time you spent two hours at Stansted, <laughs> you don't want to see another Ryanair ever again, to be honest. But anyway. <laughs> That, that's the funny thing about Stansted is that no. because it's so full of, of Ryanairs and stuff, you don't quite mind the Maxes, but if it's like the standard 737s, it's a oh, bit like, oh. They've got, again, they've got really? one which is not the standard, haven't they? One of the orig- um, they've got a 737, which isn't uh, whatever the normal batch are. Not a Max, but the other, the other ones. So there's one. They've they got, got one. yeah, so they've got 737 800s and they've got a solitary 700 for crew 700, training. Right, yeah, yeah. So that, that sometimes comes in. So that's quite exciting. Not that yes. you actually notice because you just you just numb. It's about as exciting as it gets for Ryanair is when you yeah. don't get the main you know, the main fleet of aircraft. But, but in Stan- to be fair with Stancer though, it's it's kinda of like I, I think Stancer's like fishing. You go there, you expect to see, you know, get loads of roach or something, i.e. Ryanair's, but every now and again something really decent pitches up like a pike mm. or something. I don't know. Yeah. It's a Yeah. I saw the other day actually, um, Stansted had a private A310 going. Yeah, I oh, I, I got the heads up. That was yesterday. I got the heads up on that, but yeah, uh, I couldn't get out for it. Yeah, I couldn't get the heads up, and it was like, <laughs> oh, it's a, it's, a, it's a bugger when that happens. But it's a cool, it's a good airport to get to when you've got the variety there. But when it's all Ryanair's and stuff, it, it can get a little bit like, I'll just leave that on for next time or next time. Sort of yeah. thing. Oh, but, yeah. on that. yeah, it is what it yeah, is. Yeah, that's a collector. You, you need a pool of people, don't you? And you all throw a quid in and you rate the um, landing out of 10, and whoever gets closest wins the pool of cash. <laughs> I think that's what you need today. Actually, has anybody, has anybody noticed that Ryanair actually starts to land a lot smoother? That's yeah. probably because we've criticised them enough that they're probably getting bored of listening to it. <laughs> I, have, I, have a theory. I do have a theory that um, during the pandemic, when it, like, they obviously didn't have enough planes for the pilots, so the pilots were taking out planes anyway and practicing their landings. Yeah, yeah, they're yeah, doing that at Bristol as well. When Bristol started yeah. getting up and running again, they took uh, EasyJet three twenties out and basically took them out, flew one circuit and flew it back in again just to get um, the hours up. Yeah, um, Tom, you just got to put Transatlantic Allison's comment on there about Ryanair's at Stads. That is brilliant. That is brilliant. There you go. <laughs> Ryanair's <laughs> and are like pigeons at Trafalgar yeah. Square. Thanks, <laughs> 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 Allison. Yeah, man. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> but actually, to, to to be fair, Darren Smith says the same with Heathrow and BAA 320s. Yeah. Now, I was like that with A319s before, where or like just anything to do with like a 320 or a 319, where it was like, it's a bit like the tap situation, as we call it, Ian, where like if you knew one was coming in, you'd be like, I, I don't mind not getting that sort of thing. But like 319s mm-hmm. now are obviously leaving the fleet. So it, that, that for me changes my mind. I'm like, yeah, you've got to you know, make the most of them and that. But yeah, free twenties and stuff. I just from time to time was like, yeah, you can have that one because I'm not, you know, I've got too many of them. And especially when you got like three or four in a row, you think, really? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Bit yeah. different with the neos and stuff because they are still new aircraft and we're Try not streaming them live. Often. What do you say yeah. now? It's one of those. You know what I mean? Oh. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, that, yeah, yeah. Normally we call it toilet break. Yeah, you know, it's a nice toilet break when uh, you get like a nice row of like aircraft you don't want to get. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah. um it's a, it's a shame really because we take them all for granted, don't we? And we shouldn't. But be. That's it. Yeah, that's mm. it. It's a, you, know, you you take them for granted and stuff like three nineteens and stuff. They used to be so mm. common, like yeah. so common that you think, oh bloody hell again. But now because there's only a handful in the in in the fleet left because they are getting on a bit. You think you kind of want to get them now because you know, you don't know. They're going to disappear, aren't you? You know they're disappearing. Yeah, I think yeah, a degree, it's, degree of it is yeah. relative to what you see on a day to day. Like down in Bournemouth, we see obviously Ryanair a lot. The go the first time we were seeing the BA three twenty was actually a little bit. Oh yeah, that's uh, that's pretty deep. Certainly when we have had them on yeah, fog in Bournemouth, that was. Uh, yeah. Really exciting to have British Airways 320s in at Bournemouth, but like you say, it's if you different, 
Yeah, if you're down Murtle Avenue every day, you you get fed up by the afternoon. Yeah, but hang on. At least at Bournemouth, you've got those 747s coming in for uh, the storage and stuff. That must have been good. Yeah, that was amazing. And, and obviously, we, we've kept the 340s, which is out of this world. Yeah, 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 yeah. They, they're good, yeah. Yeah, yeah, 747 storage. And uh, we've had two, uh, no, three this year, 747s coming in. Three, three definitely made various trips between. So, yeah, we've, we've sort of become a little base. We're lucky down. Mm. And well, you're still well, getting you still get quite a few 340s as well, lucky. aren't you? Yeah. <laughs> you do live in Bournemouth. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> We're lucky until no, the sea no, level rises. No, There's any <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, it's 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 strange because obviously, like you guys at Bournemouth have had like obviously ex Virgin seven four sevens. You've had um, former KLM seven four sevens, and obviously now the yeah. the old um, Iron Maiden seven four seven things like that. And the so, Virgin Atlantic seven four as well. I did just say that, Steve. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I'll catch you up in a minute. You will catch up, yeah. No, that's fine. Yeah. Um, right there, you go. It's Ian's. Ian's it's, uh, Ian, I'm sure Ian disappeared already, but there you go. It's Ian's turn to disappear quickly. Um, but yeah, so there was a question here, Loopy, that I wanted to ask you, um, which I'm just going to go back and find. It was from Jack Rolls. Um, now here we go. Uh, so he asks, uh, "Are you a fan of the new fighter jet aircraft?" He's put the Typhoon. I don't think he realizes it's quite an old plane now. Uh, or the seven, uh, the F thirty five Lightning two. Are you a fan of either one? Mm, I like the F thirty five. I do like the F thirty five, but the Typhoon. It, it, no, the Typhoon, oh. the Typhoon took over from the Tornado, and I'm a huge Tornado fan. Ken's disappearing now, so it's just oh, that's a bit of a win. Yeah, okay, we'll go with that. There we go. We we'll go here for now. So you're not not a big fan Prove of that. the uh, yeah, just do that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, there we go. Oh, lovely. <laughs> so not a fan yeah. of the the, the time then. There's just something about it. I know the bloody lab when they go past the sonic boom. I mean, it, it, I thought an atomic bomb had gone off. It was just so loud, and then. I spoke to Ken, and Ken and Sarah both said they heard it sort of 30 miles up the road in Chelmsford. It's like incredible. Mm. It's incredible. But, uh, and that was all for some silly little plane that was going at the standstill that uh, didn't have his transponder on. <laughs> yeah, I, I do love the Eurofight. I mean, I, like, when it comes to the, the air show down here, it's a main attraction. And there was one year and cover was probably, I don't know, 500 feet, something like that. And it shot along the seafront, and then it just pulled a uh, a full uh, vertical pull-up, and it went through the cloud, and that was the end of the noise it made when it did that. was absolutely unreal. That was uh, that was quality, yeah. The thing is, it was probably the loudest thing there as well. Uh, yeah. Oh, yeah, I would have um, thought so. Back in the good old days when we used to have uh, the uh, South End Air show, I mean, you used to have the Jaguar, the the, uh, the Hurricane, um, not the Hurricanes, the uh, Tornadoes, and then everything went, and all you've got is a Typhoon. And mm. it was like, okay, yeah. you know, what, what, what's the point of going all the way down there for one loud, loud aircraft? I want to yeah, go, go down and see more. The old Sea Harrier I'm a big, big fan of. Yeah, Bournemouth, I used to love going down there, because my mum used to live in Paul. Oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, yes, yeah, so I actually lived in a, in a tower block by uh, Paul Harbour. And uh, we used to get the, the old Catalina come over the top of the block, heading to the Oh, Catalina, yeah. We could, we could actually sort of watch the Red Arrows doing their display over the top of the trees in the distance. You know, is it? Oh, wow. Great stuff, yeah. Mm. My wow. kids used to love it. Yeah, got the old Catalinas. That's like my, my old man's favourite. Uh, Favorite plane that the yeah the Kathleen and that and obviously you get quite privileged to see them at, like anywhere near uh, Duxford uh, and things like that. Is that genuine, Steve? So, just so I can <laughs> 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 that genuine. Yeah, everyone's yeah, like disappearing up. like left, right, and center. It's crazy. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Oh, it's it was genuine. I can see. Yeah, it's right. Even <laughs> genuine. It's fine. Can I just <laughs> can I just say um, I'll be letting airliners live down if we, if I didn't say. 
hit the thumbs up. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect. Hit the thumbs up. Yeah. Perfect. Uh, right, what I will do, um, whilst obviously we wait for Steve to come back. Um, now, Ken has very, very nicely... Um, have I still got yeah. it? Yeah, sorry, I've got it open. I'm trying to find it on the thing. There we go, so I've got it here. Um, Ken, I want you to talk me through what I'm about to play, oh, which nice, called, right. is... I'm just going to see right. if I can... It, 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 put it on, pull, hang on, hold it. Just keep it on pause for a sec. So we can do an intro to it, yeah? All right. Okay, right. Obviously, with travel restrictions easing somewhat, um, if you fancy going to Skiphole, go and stay at the Coralyn Hotel, right? Now, this is the journey. If you stay there, they have a, a thing called the Sky Bar, which is at the top of the hotel. And you, you can only access it by a special lift. So run it this is the special lift <laughs> i i will run it because i in in a, in a second because sam danvers who steve knows very well has decided to put shows now <laughs> and, and just just as i bring that on screen steve has now returned <laughs> <laughs> so yeah steve your old mate sam danvers has uh popped in with the show got even better when you left Did you say my old mate return? Are you saying, my old mate, he's, um, he's dead to me ever since he left Verd, and I'm absolutely gutted that he fire never took his house out yesterday. <laughs> <laughs> if you wanted a reply. Oh, oh let's run. <laughs> yeah, what they say on normally, they say run VT, didn't they? Normally? Yeah, run VT. <laughs> run VT. <laughs> you might also notice something really interesting in their garden at the hotel. So this is a sky bar. Oh, going up to the sky bar. Special elevator. And there is commentary when they do that, but yeah, blah blah blah. Yeah, so I will I will leave it off just so that we can yeah, talk yeah, about yeah. it. And, and, it. It. and there you go. In in the garden is an XKLM seven four seven, which I believe is now open. It wasn't mm. when we were there. It's a hotel now, isn't it? No, no, that it's in the hotel grounds loops. No, what I'm saying is they've actually turned part of it into the hotel. I'll have that. I, I, I have that itself, yeah. Because this was uh, 2020. And at the top, they've got this open top sky bar. It's probably just as well the commentary is down because we did a live stream from there. Um, <laughs> I remember and well. you can imagine. <laughs> uh, it took us four parts before we actually got permission. Well, before we actually met, found the man that had given us permission, we'd given up. Anyway, so then we had to get streaming. But that, that's looking over to. Uh, no, I think that's two. Uh, sorry, 18, 18 centre, I think. Because you can see the bottom of the bottom quite a long way away from it. But you'll yeah. see in a minute. Um, you just get literally get views right across the, all the terminal areas. It's fantastic. As long as you like Heineken, because that's all they were serving. <laughs> bear in mind, well, actually, to be fair, bear in mind, this was July 2020 after the first lockdown. So. They, they do normally have a bit more. No, but I'll just get you a drink. This, this is, uh, oh, that's that weird, that's a little weird runway. Um, can't remember its bloody number. It's, but they, they tend to use it quite a lot for the, uh, the business flights. Because you basically, you've got three runways that run north to south at Skipple. You've got runway 24, which is used quite heavily, um, which we may see later because I've, I've sent, Tom's footage, whether we see that or not. And then you've got another one that it literally goes uh, 0927, and then that weird one. I can't remember its exact um, thing is. But yeah, so if, if you just want a few beers and be able to look over the airport, that is where you want to be. It's Fantastic. Great. And I, I remember, remember modding. I remember modding on that, and I'm thinking to myself, i got live music playing now. Oh, yeah. And then, sure enough, it was about about a month later. I get a message from YouTube saying that they would they were um, what, what's the term they use? Yeah, copyright infringement. Yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. Because um, basically, um, we we were filming. Basically, the bar was open, and there was a loudspeaker right below above my head. It was the only place I could film from to get over the the glass bits. So hmm. there was a 
the speaker above my head just blaring out music all day long <laughs> and yeah and even to this day sarah still gets copyright infringements from either youtube or facebook on God, it's, it's, it comes through <laughs> from sony isn't it yeah it, yeah. it was funny though Probably a good thing that I actually muted this then, because otherwise I'd be getting hit with them as well. Yeah, 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 <laughs> yeah, yeah absolutely. <laughs> and that, that is kind of the view. You, you, you can actually see, you can see across the polar bar, which is actually about two and a half miles, three miles away. Um, you can actually see pretty much action. That that plane that's taking off now is on runway uh, that would be two four, I think. Right, and that's quite. Oh, that was us. <laughs> And that's landing at the polar barn, so you can literally actually see every single runway, which is quite unusual for, for some skip stunning old. views. Mm. Right stunning, yeah, views. quality. Yeah. It's massive, that airport, isn't it? It's, it's a huge airport, yeah. it, wasn't huge. The great, it wasn't the greatest of days, to be fair, but yeah, in terms of weather. But honestly, oh my god, if you want to see everything that's going on. That's the place to go. So, fully recommend the corridor. And it wasn't that expensive, to be fair. I think yeah. the beers, the beers <clears> probably were. But oh, oh, the other thing they've got right downstairs, they have this restaurant thing. Right, it's <laughs> brilliant, right? And it's kind of like all you can eat. And I think it was about thirty euros, but it also includes as much wine as you can drink in two hours. Well, but you were happy then. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you drink a lot of wine in two hours, can't you? <laughs> oh, what a pity. <laughs> <laughs> totally recommended. You still <laughs> hold the record to this day. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. The only th actually, uh, um, for, for guys like airliners live and people that um, need a lot of battery power, one thing to, I would say is, um, I think the, the is it the voltage or the amperage or whatever it is from the, the sockets is not as strong. As we're used to, I think it's two twenty as opposed to two forty, and that makes a big difference when you're trying to um, recharge your batteries. <laughs> you need to take extra batteries with you. You found that out, didn't you? That's I don't know what, yeah. So that's that video that's uh, that's just ended. But yeah, um, a nice little insight there, and, and I, th I think if I remember correctly, I remember reading. I think if you were to land on sort of the the polar barn or or, or somewhere one of the one of the runways that's like far away from the terminals it's like a 10 minute taxi in the plane to the to the actual terminal mm -hmm. one of the, the far runways it's it's crazy how sort of how mass you know how massive the actual airport actually yeah, is. from the polar barn to the actual main terminal is yeah it's about 10 minutes Eight. Eight days isn't it also if, if you're a stills man or even just want to get some interesting video there are some brilliant locations to the hang on get there comes to the, towards the south of the area, uh, airport when the planes come from the polder barn and they go across like dikes and everything and you get the traditional like those nice line of and road. trees and everything it's the road off yes yeah yeah it's, it is absolutely fantastic it's, it's well worth don't just go to that viewing area just go just explore the airport hire a car explore the airport it's fantastic absolutely fantastic mm. actually oh, before i show <laughs> Before I show the, the Alton coin, Alan is like, but they changed it to one hour after Ken went. <laughs> Out of stock. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, pre order before you turn up. Yeah. Um, but yeah, Alison putting there that uh, it's 18 right that has the long taxi, which. Yes. You know, yeah. Don't really want to argue with that. I'm, I'm sure she knows that. Yeah. Um, mm. But yeah, it's it's, it's crazy. Yeah, polder, um, barn, polder barn landing from the north, it becomes eighteen, right? Yeah, yeah, that's it. And uh, Hingle saying, to be fair, they may as well do flights from the polder barn to the actual terminal. <laughs> <laughs> would be a bad idea. Uh, well, second piece of footage, Ken, uh, as I'm going to play here. Talk us through this. All oh, right, okay, right. This this um, this was really this was the same trip. Um, we were sober at this point. Um, this is actually run that runway. Two, two, yeah, two, four, um, and the, the conditions were horrendous. It was really horrible. But I've just included this just because of what what we saw. To be fair, obviously a KLM seven four seven. You'll see a few other bits and pieces in a minute. And then after after this, what you'll see is um, the same day, about an hour and a half later, when we managed to sort of get ourselves some food and go back go to the pol a polder barn and it was a beautiful day 
that. So is this a triple? I don't know. Yes. Mm. Yeah. This, and again, this is a, this is another great location, and they do use this runway quite a lot. Yeah. It looks like a stunning, stunning location. Yeah, yeah, it's and it's dead easy to get to. Parking's probably what 300, 400 meters away, something like that. Easy yeah. enough, then I suppose. Oh mm. god, yeah, 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 dead easy, dead yeah. easy. Uh, just while we play this bit of footage. Um, there's a comment here from uh, Louise Sylvia Wood saying, hello everyone, what's everyone's names from top to bottom, please? Uh, my name is Tom. Underneath me we have... My name is Steve. Underneath? I'm Ian. Underneath? I'm Ken. Ken. Underneath. Luffy. I am Luffy. Yes, we've got trip. Tom, Steve, Ian, Ken, and Loopy all in that order. And this is mm. this is the only China Southern 380 I've ever seen. And probably the only one I ever liked to see. Look at the fluff. Look at the fluff. Yeah. 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 Sorry, yeah. Sorry. We were absolutely dread. It wasn't like heavy rain, but it was really like heavy drizzle. And we've been there about three hours and we got we were drenched by some that guy out there. That blue at the bottom, that's darker than we normally see. Is it? Yeah. Or oh, maybe I've got the wrong lenses in. <laughs> <laughs> I think this is a Cafe 747 because we saw that. Well, you haven't seen it, but. When you can we... probably tell by the fact that it's got a massive wingspan. So it'll be a, yeah, easily be a. 747. Yeah. Was this done in a live stream or was this just footage that you. No, this was live. We did live it as well. Live, yeah. This, this mm. is like that kind of the uh, camera recordings. Such a good, good spot. Cash, right? Oh, yeah. On a, on a, good, on a yeah. good day, this certainly, uh, let's work this out. On a, In the morning, this would be bang on for the sun. Yeah. Oh, oh yeah. Man. That's where it's at. Yeah. Actually, no, no, no. Actually, well, no, midday would be actually midday would be really good. Midday, and th this was taken, I think, uh, it was in the morning. Was it? I thought it was about lunchtime. Well, it was about 11 ish, yeah, yeah, about 11 say. till about one, I think. And then, same day, we went to the polar barn. Bang, <laughs> welcome to Brussels. <laughs> As a lot of people <laughs> say, like, yeah, no. Have you got this one that Brussels chutney? <laughs> no, but I know a man that has. Yeah. <laughs> what else? Oh, dear. <clears throat> right, that's a special livery Peter Pan. They were all quite, the locals were quite excited. I've got no idea why. Oh, Trans have you? Okay. Okay. Yeah, nice. <laughs> uh, just while we'll see this footage is playing again, we'll just answer a couple of questions I've yeah, got yeah. here. Louise Sylvia Wood, obviously asking about the names before. She said, "Off to Bristol tomorrow. Any ideas for spotting guys, please? Winters Lane is the one you want to go to. That's over <clears> Manchester. <throat> yeah, Winters Lane is the one you want to go to for spotting. There, it's an official spotting lane of some sort." You will find it on Google Maps. There are other places, but I wouldn't recommend them. I saw somebody filming on top of a building that you're not supposed to go on to, so no doubt we'll see a case of um, case of the old berries. I'm going to put that as a rhyme. I'm not going to mention names, but you can kind of guess why and uh, have a spot in the location ruined by other people. Um, but Winter's Lane is probably your safest and, and easiest bet for that one. <clears throat> uh, access to the polder barn, Ken. Easy or not easy? Uh, you need a car. <laughs> Simple as that. You need a car, but yeah, if you've got a car, it's dead easy. Yeah, there's parking, even a parking fine or? Yeah, there's, there's a big car park and there's also um, a burger van there as well. Oh, beautiful. Oh, and it sounds good. like it's perfection. It's actually quite good, actually, yeah. Mm. Yeah, fantastic. Amsterdam is one of these airports that I do want to go to. Like, I do want to, to visit the Polar Barn and stuff because, like I say, you're unrestricted with viewing and, and, and things mm. like yeah. that. Um, that's yeah. the beauty of it. It's, it's the unrestrictedness of it. It's just like, like the polder barn. And, and to be fair, I, I, I was a bit lazy. I didn't actually walk further enough up. But you go a little bit further up. You can be. You can do any point on this site like where they touch down, where they rotate, <laughs> anything you want. Yeah. 
So I can't be pretty good where you were, I think. Um, so yeah, I, was, I was just reading the, um, the comment from Hingle, who says, is this spot near the McDonald's? Asking for a friend. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, no. Um, I was going to send over the McDonald's place. That's literally about five miles from here by road, definitely. Definitely need a car for that, then. Yeah. <laughs> you can get Uber Eats now, can't you? Sure, a delivery. <laughs> <laughs> Get you stay at the corridor and you can actually walk to the McDonald's location. <coughs> there you go. But this is, you um, know, it's just the views that, and it's just fantastic. <laughs> it's just, but it's yeah, really you good. You need a car. You need a car to really explore. And I've, mm. I've found a, a location um, for the polar barn, especially in the morning, because because where the sun is, you need to be the other side. We've, we've found a location, I haven't used it yet, which I reckon is going to be absolutely stunning. No no one seems to have done it yet. So hopefully if we can get over there at some point this year, we will, yeah, give you the polder barn like you've never seen. Yeah. It really is good. Keep it you, need, you have to have your party. Well, I, I, I drive over there anyway in my own car because I kind of realise we need to be move, uh, mobile. And also, I really... Don't want to be packing all my gear into a, a case and put it on a plane and blah 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 blah. I'd rather just drive and, and you get wildlife. Look, don't know where that's going. Oh, yeah. But yeah. <laughs> Wonder what the call sign for that heron was. H A H E R one. Tuning into <laughs> tuning into tower, like you know. G bird. <laughs> <laughs> but we reckon there's probably another eight or nine locations. That we've not even touched yet. We've, we've seen them, but and what, what we what we actually we were going to do this. I don't remember, Luke. So I think it was in 2019. We were we were kind of planning doing a 20. It was 2020 September. Yeah, 2020 September. We were going to do a, a big group trip out to um, yeah. Amsterdam, Schiphol, and we were, we were arranging cars because on this occasion, for example, Daniel Voigt from um, oh, Germany from germany he he was with us the day before we'd met marijuana from brussels to the sky mm. you know I mean? and we were going to get everybody together um mainly cars and vans and stuff so we could transport everybody so those that wanted to fly could fly we, we'd drive blah 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 and we were going to have a, a weekend out there just exploring the whole airport but uh obviously covid kind of uh, screwed that so, again <laughs> but yeah, man, I'm, I'm, I kind of want to try and do it this September, but I'm a bit nervous on the fact that but Daniel's <laughs> talking about uh, doing a meetup for Frankfurt this year. Yeah, we, we did his one in January 2020, actually. That was when it was all foggy. We got there and filmed lots of fun. Couldn't see it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, and then the plan was to do one in July, then obviously <clears> that went by the by. I think it's I think it's July this year, isn't it? Sounds right. That sounds right. I'm not actually sure. No, Maro Ann was at Frankfurt yesterday, and uh, how was he? Well, I, think, I think he was there over the weekend, or about well, two or three days. But well, I want to go there. That looks oh, gross. Oh my god, it's unbelievable. Mm. Uh, just going to quickly step in and say that Matthew Harris is deciding to leave us. Uh, obviously. Um, well, because Matthew's um, getting old and also he lives in the man. Yeah, he's just now one o'clock in the morning or something over there. <laughs> yeah, so he's leaving us saying night all sleep time for me. Great show as usual. Oh, Thank man, you for joining yeah, us. Matt. <laughs> Thank Thank you. Matt. Uh, Hingle <laughs> says, uh, group trip to Amsterdam. What could go wrong? <laughs> Yeah, so <laughs> to which point Jack Rolls put Hingle, no doubt Ken will have 20 plus beers and six and a half glasses of wine. Why not seven? Why half a glass? Yeah, half a glass. Does that even exist? Actually, That's probably the about, olive um, down the chin and that. <laughs> talking about wine in Manchester, we were there for that um, show, was it in February? The, uh, the trans Graf, Graf Graf here, wasn't it? No, well, yeah. Yeah, yeah. The, the the fair in the in the hangar. Um, yeah, there was quite a lot of wine consumed on both the Friday and the Saturday nights. Lovely. Yeah, <laughs> it was really good. Honestly, it's really great event, and 
it's again on the 20 i think it's the 22nd of july this year where we'll be launching two manchester books get that two bloody That's books on manchester two yeah allegedly so right steve will have to buy them <laughs> yeah <laughs> False promises, uh, that's what all I'm all about. Yes. Uh, Transatlantic Allison uh, put a shocking float from the Vueling aircraft. Someone will be getting a ping from flight safety. Right, this this one here, this lot, special livery, but all I can see is um, graffiti. That's because you're old. What's that about? Uh, Gretzky. Yeah, Gretzky. That's, I'm, I'm certain that's like... a. Uh, I'm, I'm, someone will probably tell us now that you've mentioned it, but I want to hazard a guess and say it's probably like a food item. Okay. Sounds like a food item. There you go. Polish biscuit. I, I thought I recognised it. Jim Gemmel going biscuits. Mm. Oh, well done. Yeah. I thought I recognised it. Yeah. Gretzky is a Polish biscuit. No one turning on in the background there. That's a good shot. I like that. And he gets, there you go. Hingle gets his knowledge from Asda. There you go. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> spends all day walking up and down the foreign food aisle. <laughs> and to be fair, as it's pretty Except decent for foreign food, it really is. <laughs> Fantastic. Um, I did see um, Louise Sylvia Wood saying uh, you should make this a regular thing. We are doing this as a regular thing. It has been weekly for the last what 13, 14 months, I think, but only for about a month or so on Visions Aviation and probably for a while yet so um yeah here every sunday now we did do wednesdays but we're now doing sundays <clears throat> Alison saying uh, other market other supermarkets <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah uh andrew martin's about to leave us uh he says program on sky arts about mick ronson off ski cheers guys cheers andy i'll speak to you soon mate mike a bit um let's have a look as well. I think that's pretty much it. So if anyone has any questions, do you know what? I, I normally say we run for about 19 minutes, but I'm kind of not ready to end this yet. So we'll keep Hi, going. Darren. For just say hello to Darren Graham. Yeah, everyone, yeah, Darren, Darren Graham is in the uh in the chat. So good evening to you. I was gonna say in the house then it would make me sound Hi, like someone else. In the house. Um, yeah, would have made me sound like somebody else then. <laughs> But yes, uh, but good evening to you. So yes, we'll keep this going for about another half hour or so. I was going to say about 90 minutes or so, but we tend to overrun and overrunning sometimes isn't a bad thing. So if anyone's got any questions for us, it could be for Ken, it could be for Loopy, it could be for both, it could be for either either one of us five, really. Uh, do get them into the chat and we'll answer them um, for the next sort of half hour or so as we run through uh, the last little bits of the footage. I've got a question. I know it's something I was thinking about before. I know right. it's a question to everybody. I'm not, I'm not going to answer this because it's a question to you for. But in in the history of aviation, from the Wright brothers taking off on the first flight right up to where we are in the present day, which particular part of aviation history would you have liked to have witnessed firsthand? <laughs> There you go. There's a question no. for you. What a question, that is. Yeah. You can sit I was that thinking about it before. I can I go back to when they in the they... chat as well? Can, can I go back to when they invented balloons? <laughs> <laughs> Good God. Um, all right. Well, 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 Steve, we'll go with you. We'll go down the pecking order of, of how we are at the moment. So, uh, any no. point of aviation you'd like to? <laughs> I'm glad I'm not. <laughs> like the late 80s, early eighties with like the uh, the big old Boeing's the sort of end of the tri stars the the uh, seven four sevens in their best sort of popularity almost their heyday I think and like we spoke about last week old um, Laker seeing his planes knocking around would have been would have been something special so yeah early eighties late seventies something around there would have been uh, spot mm. on for me. Okie dokie. Um, seeing as Ian asked the question, we'll go for you, Ken. I think I'd, I should would like to go back to uh, just after the war and the creation of Heathrow, really. I think mm. because, hey, am I allowed to take my camera back with me when we go? Take your camera back if you need to. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So, oh my God, I'm just <laughs> yeah. right up. Yeah. It's you just... can't use your battery. 
<laughs> yeah, I, the whole thing of how Heathrow actually grew out of obviously an airfield I, it's mad it really is mad so I, I'd like to probably like, it looks like an airfield that was about 20, 20 miles further away than anything else yeah, <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah started up in Crawley didn't it no no it's no but when he throw started, I, yeah, I'd, I'd, I'd like to have, you know, seen the canvas tents, which were terminals, apparently. Um, yeah, how, the, how did that all work? So, so, so say they, let's say back 1949, 50. That's where I'd like to go back and have a look at. Yeah, yeah. Oh, Tom's gone. Oh, so I'm just sorting the camera out. It just looked a bit dark, that's all. Yeah. All good. I think. Yeah, we can still hear me. That's yeah. fine. Okay, cool. Uh, Loopy, over to you. Well, I've had a little think about this, and considering what we know now about the history of it, I'd like to go back to the birth of Concord and just watch yeah. that entire thing that all well. over again. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Good shout. Yeah, definitely. Shout Not the only one. Not the only one. Mm. I think there's a few people in here that would said that they go back... Uh, Including uh, 01 Tasker 01 saying first Concorde flight from the inside and the out. I saw it from the outside. Yeah. Mm. First test flight. Um, I was living in Walthamstow. And uh, the first test flight actually went past the end of my road. Wow. And you could hear the noise. And I'm looking around going, what the hell is that? And there she was, right at the end of my road. Wow. Yeah. Some spectacle, yeah. wasn't it? Yeah, yeah, definitely. definitely yeah. So, yeah. Oh, absolutely. Uh, Jim Gemmell was another one that would do it as well. Um, Concorde Maiden Flight. <laughs> uh, Airline is live. Exactly the same. Yeah. Um, Jack Rolls has actually been inside Concorde. <laughs> oh, don't go there again. <laughs> don't go oh. there again. There's a famous, <laughs> oh, there's a famous bit, yeah, yeah. That really tickled Ian when he was reading the comment out that Jack Rolls put. And, like, I'd really like to be inside a... Mm-hmm. And yeah, that just completely set Ian off because I don't think Jack knew what you were saying. Um, Rob Brown playing spotting with an interesting choice for me: World War II force technolo- technological innovation that wasn't uh, possible at the time. Uh, the try, the try yeah, once a good shout. Mm. Because don't forget how much was developed during the World World War Two. It was ridiculous. But, well, and and mm-hmm. since, oh, yeah, that was yeah. Now. Mm. Yeah. yeah. Some very good shouts here. Uh, uh, Alison put a Saturn V launch. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, definitely. Quite, yeah, quite interesting. Um, Sarah uh, saying that uh, Concord, well, she'd like to see Concord in the air again. I think we all would. Yeah, yeah. Absolutely. We know um, it's actually, not Darren, Darren Smith in the comments, three magpies has been at Heathrow since the beginning. It has. There's, there's a video on um, YouTube about Heathrow. <laughs> actually the village that got basically annihilated because of Heathrow being built and the three magpies if you if you visit the three magpies you come off the a4 turn in a car park that used to be the road that went into what is now Heathrow mm. it's fantastic crazy <laughs> uh exactly the comment i expected from jack roll was saying loopy that aircraft was incredible i went to yoverton and went inside her and it was an experience like no other he knows exactly what he's saying now yeah <laughs> he knows now, exactly yeah. what he's doing now the, yeah. the young jack um, I, I actually had a thought about this the other day um and since the heat uh, since um uh congol's been grounded i've actually seen five different ones mm. uh, is that right wow yeah you got mm. yoverton You've got the one at Heathrow. You've got the one at Manchester. Um, Duxford. Done Duxford recently. Yeah, Duxford. And the other one was in uh, New York. Oh, shut yeah. up. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I saw the one at uh, East Fortune, right. which incidentally is an amazing. <laughs> There's one in Scotland and one in Bristol. Go and see them. New York. <laughs> uh. yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. On, as you were, as you were, Steve. No, I was just praising um, East Fortune for being such a good museum. If you ever get the chance to go there, because they've got Concord up there, just outside Edinburgh. There's another one in Brooklyn's, of course. I forgot about that. 
Oh yeah. Mm, yeah. Yeah. Oh, we we have a sales stand most years when we do the bus show underneath the wings of Concord. Well, the stand is underneath the wings of well, pretty much underneath the wings of Concord. So just look, keep looking at me. Go. I've never been inside it. Never been mm. inside it. it should should do. <laughs> You've never been inside Concord? No, I've been inside Concord, but not oh, right. in Brooklyn, where we have oh, a right. okay. well, underneath right. it oh, say. year after year. Yeah, I was going to say. It's quite funny, actually, because I, I learned that the one at Yeovilton, which is the second prototype, um, is actually, I forget whether it's like shorter or longer than the actual Concord that went into service. And it's the oh, only shorter. one of its kind that's actually, is it shorter? Yeah, definitely. It's like seven, but it's seven in, like, I'm pretty sure it's like, it's something to do with number seven. I'm sure of it. But it's actually a lot, the actual fuselage of the one at Yeovilton, the second um, prototype, is the only short fuselage version that was ever made. And it never flew passengers. It went there in like 1974 and has been sat there ever since. Well, so actually, Tom, them. now you now mention sure. I've been in the one in Yeovilton, I've been the one at Duxford, both those are prototypes. I actually haven't mm. been in, in, inside proper Concord. Sarah, in the last six months, has been in two of them. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's it, wrong, it's, it's yeah, sucked, I know. Yeah. <laughs> I think it's amazing for like, oh, when you... as well. Yeah. <laughs> I think it's amazing, like, you go in Concord and stuff and you actually sort of get an understanding for how cramped it could be in there. Yeah. Yeah, yeah very claustrophobic. Yeah, they don't muck the around with the space Dutch, in there. That's mm. with the one in there, like, because you, you've got all the computer racks. And when you've got someone in front of you out and you've got the crowd coming up the stairs behind you, yeah, very claustrophobic. Yeah, that's fine. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. It's, 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 it's crazy. Um, some some other um, answers to the question. Although uh, Jack uh, has, has put an interesting comment. Uh, Jack, um, he's put one aircraft he'd love to see again is the uh, Dassault Bregon Super Etendard. Um, sadly retired. Quite. Have rambling. you got a picture? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm not familiar with that. <laughs> I yeah. I know exactly. I want, what a picture. About. I want translation. Yeah, I'll, I know exactly what he's talking about. I'll find a picture. Um, the last time I flew it, up uh, flew it, <laughs> I wish. Um, the last time I saw it fly um, was, I believe, on its final year of service. I think 2017 or 2018, I think it was. 20, no, sorry, 2016, because it flew at Yeovilton. And I'll never forget it because it was such a, an interesting um, display with the Rafale as well. Um, I'll just grab a picture here that is, I know it's going to show it off yeah, quite well. I think I've seen uh, it. I think it's is it not flying flying again this year? I, mm, I don't think so. No, no, uh, it might be something else I'm thinking of. No, the hunter is supposed to be back in production. Um, I'm just trying to. I'm just trying to find. I mean, th this might do. I don't know if it will or not, but we'll go for it. It might not actually show it off properly, but I mean, the Germans did have it apparently. I'm all I'm learning this literally right now. Um, is that genuine, Ken? What? For yeah, yeah, yeah. Bank? yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you want taken off? <laughs> <laughs> God, you know, you never know. You never know. Um, right. So, could have uh, got messy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> This is this is what he means. Yeah. I know what it looks like. I don't know if you guys sort of know know what it looked like before or not. It's a bit that's like the, uh, Super Etendar. It's a bit like um, a cross between a um, buccaneer. Yeah? Well, I was going to say um, yeah, like a buccaneer, but also. A phantom. Yeah. Yeah. I can see that. It's mm. a lovely little thing, but they were, mm. yeah, they got retired in 2016 and made its last um, flying display. Uh, I've got some pictures of it myself so somewhere. Well, that's a, a French in the German Air Force. Crazy, yeah. right? <laughs> 
I find but whether that's really, a, I don't know if that's really weird. weird. <laughs> yeah, but that that is a super red and dark. So okay, yeah, it's a another one for my collection. Yeah, that's it. yeah, Jack's obviously <laughs> been on Google tonight. Yeah, he's trying. I, think I, he's trying I, I like John it. John John Hucklesby's uh, comment. I'd go back to the Saunders Road Fifty Three was the first high speed research plane from which they developed Concorde. I mean, let's move. The plane still holds the world horizontal speed record of one thousand three hundred twenty miles an hour on the measured mile just off the coast down here, which I think is Dorsills. Some Yeah. Oh, actually, I'll tell you what. Uh, the Germans never had it. So there you go. Yeah, it says here in the, in the comments, actually, from Darren. Darren Smith. Yeah. Was never German yeah. Air Force. Never German. I think it's a deal. They've obviously just drawn it up on that. So. But yes, uh, so that's, yeah. Ah, got it. I Definitely. never I never actually answered the question, but i quite like to go back to when the 747 was produced and, like, the hype around it and um, the, the whole sort of, you know, because the 747 pretty much was one of those planes that also changed aviation as we know it by allowing planes that big to be built. So... Tom, but what about going to that field where it was, where the Bright Brothers were like, you can imagine everybody just hanging around going, what are these idiots doing? And they yeah. Go, yeah. <laughs> you know what yeah. I mean? Yeah, that's, well, that's never going to take <laughs> off. I mean, <laughs> yeah, I mean, you, you could do. I mean, you could literally, I mean, I think it's, it's a bit of an obvious answer, I think. But, I mean, I think everybody would like to go back to that time to kind of point and laugh and be like, eh, what's this bloody thing going to do? Yeah. Yeah. Like you know, that thing. Yeah, yeah. You, that you never know with with that sort of um, that that you know. We, they, I'm sure they didn't know that that time. That 100 years later, you know, would be where we're at. So mm. oh, it's mad. Yeah. Can I ask another question? Oh, go on then. Right. No. Um. I, I picked up on what um Alison was saying before about um. Is it the boom overture? The overture yeah. boom boom sonic. Um, and she said, what are your opinions on it? But I want to add as well, do you actually think there will be a market for it, and do you think it will actually happen? Mm. All right, we'll, mm. go with, we'll, go, we'll go in reverse order this time, so Loopy, you're first. Mm. <laughs> I, I actually like the idea of it, but whether it will ever happen, I have no idea. I mean, it, 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 apparently they've already started building it. Hmm. Or prototypes, should I say? But I don't know. I really don't know. Not yeah, even. But, but didn't they start building the uh, the Boeing supersonic plane? That didn't get very far, did it? Well, they, they built, built, half, built half of it. Yeah, yeah, yeah they built half, half of it, yeah, and then they, they couldn't fund it. Anyway, mm. Yeah, couldn't fund it in the end, could they? So, yeah. do, do you think it might be like Concord, where like the the Concord were developed by French and uh, English, so? Air France and BA had to take it, sort of thing. Um, I think United have put an order in for this boom overture and putting a lot of funding into it. So, don't you think it'll be like the similar kind of thing where United well, are going to have to take it and do I, something I, with I it? I think that, you know, there's going to be a bit of smart, uh, bit of smart marketing there because it, from what I understand, it's only going to take around about twenty to thirty passengers mm. because it is limited space. You see the size of the windows down the side, and you go, "Really?" You know, it, it, as I said, I, I, I just don't know. I, I just find that. I, I presume they're an American company. <laughs> too, too hard into it, but I assume they're an American company. It's Therefore, an American company. There you go. Then the, they, uh, they, they one, basically have, they won't have the restrictions, will they? That we had. Yeah. So basically, they. They're an American company that want to bring supersonic travel back that's actually affordable to a lot of people. And they've promised a lot in terms of like the, the economy-wise. Um, and United have almost teamed up with them to make the order to get the ball rolling. So the difference mm. between Concorde and the Boom Overture is, is because it was produced in Britain um, and obviously France as well, is that the, I think, if I'm correct... The, I'm sure I'm, I'm probably wrong, but I'm sure I read some of it. Because the, the government 
said, yeah, we'll have that for our airline. And then because they were the only ones that then were sticking with it, they had to take the, I think it's like 12 or so that were actually built. Other airlines like Iran Air, I think uh, uh, Braniff and you know all the other airlines that ordered it saw it then as a non-feasible aircraft. But because of the contract that Britain and France had to build Concorde, it was literally like, well, you have to take them anyway. Yeah, yeah. Sort of I thing. do but think aviation took a little bit different because it's like you you'll build it to order, not because United have mm. teamed up with you to do it. <laughs> so, you know, when when we mentioned it before, like ages ago, there was like three three airlines that were interested in it. Obviously, United was one of them because they they obviously announced it, and then there was two hidden ones, but no one seemed to know what it was. But apparently, they've now come out as Japan Airlines and Virgin. Wow, wow. really? Virgin, yeah. yeah. Richard Branson's put support behind it. Um, but well, Alice well, just, I mean, you can't try to buy a Concorde, can you? Packs. Sorry, uh, Alice, you're just going on on its capacity. Uh, Transatlantic Alison's just put in the chat. So, yeah, there you go, sixty-five to eighty-eight. So that's kind of more viable, isn't it? Over twenty. Well, Concorde was only a hundred. Yeah, yeah. So there you go. And it's and less, Concord, but more, more efficient. Because, Concord would have kept going if the French hadn't really pulled out. Be able to carry on. Yeah. It was because we lost we lost all the bloody licenses and everything. Yeah. Yeah. It, yeah. I, I would say that I'd say boom will probably happen. I think it will. Um, I think they'll build one, they'll test fly it and everything else. I think United have ordered something like 15 to 30 of them, I think. Wow. So that's already outnumbering Concorde. Whether that happens or not is obviously then remaining to be seen. So yeah. I think, will it get to the point where they test it and then decide that maybe it's not enough and then too much goes into it? You know, Considering the first test flight's not for another three to five years, Um yeah, it's, we're still a long way off to knowing whether it's actually going to be completed in time or not, and whether it's just one of those projects that fail. So, like, uh, yeah, but Hingle, there, Hingle so. makes a point right there when he says it needs quieter engines, carbon, carbon neutral, and it needs to be efficient. Yeah, but mm. what do you do about and food? He's right about it's the ticket prices food. too. Mm. Do, yeah, do you not think it? Sorry, Ken, go on. No, 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 go, go, go. No, I, I was going to say, I was actually going to ask Steve, actually, to be honest, because he's, he's sat there being quiet. <laughs> um, do you think it might become like a concept sort of thing? So they'll build this thing, they'll fly it, and then obviously it'll it'll sort of develop into something more commercially viable sort of thing. I certainly think when Concorde stopped, the av the aviation industry took a backward step because it went from being three hours across the Atlantic to becoming six seven. But the problem with the Concorde at the time was for the elitists, like. Between the between the five of us, we would have struggled to muster up enough ticket to get <laughs> money to get a ticket between us. So, uh, yeah, the, the new one's got to be more open to the masses. Like, I'm not I'm not saying that your common your common man would be able to pay for your tickets, but it's got to be open to sort of businessmen at like a business rate flight that you see today, rather than monopoly money which is going to be the preserve of the rich and famous i think they need to be selling these seats at sort of 800 pounds sort of that money that you'd pay now for uh for sitting in business across the uh mm. across the atlantic otherwise it's got no chance because people just won't yeah. apart from the it's easy got to make it affordable it's otherwise it's just a waste absolutely. of time yeah. that's it yeah, yeah and the thing is as well i, I, I would say since the con since the concord days we, we, we've invented things like this restream and zoom and things like that so business yeah. meetings don't need to be face to face like they were back in concord days they can do it over internet quite as quite as good can't they as well yeah so uh -huh. well that was part of its charm wasn't it you could leave heathrow at six in the morning <laughs> and be back at heathrow at six at night and still do six hour meeting during the day quite comfortably mm -hmm. either end I think Alison points it out nicely. She says the future is suborbital flight. Exactly. Exactly. Oh, well, now, now you're going to get him going. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Mm. The Starship from yeah. Texas 
to Sydney in about four hours. Ah, oh, that's the way to go. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, because you can have because then you have to, have to put patches on loops. For the old. <laughs> <laughs> No, so, uh, an in interesting question actually coming from uh, zero one task zero one saying in those days people would pay for the seats uh, would anyone stump up that kind of money for a seat now that's actually a good mm. very good question it's a very yeah. good question i this, don't this, think this, so. i think people still would do to be quite honest i don't think so not with everything that's going up at the moment i think if if it, the economy goes you know because it's not going to be just obviously this country it's going to be other you know countries like America and stuff like that they're going to be affected as well, but would people still be able to start? You know, we don't know what ticket prices are going to be yet for this this to be able to get onto this plane, mm. so we don't know what, if they're going to be viable or whether they're going to be like Concord and reach out to people that are like you know, let's say loaded or something like that that can afford a thousand pound seat or something like that. We 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 don't know. So until we actually know what the 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 prices are going to be and whether it's going to be cheap or not. We can only speculate, and I speculate. I don't think I don't think a lot of people will. And I, I as much as it pains me to say it, because I'd love to see it like a Concord shape around for a very long time again. I, I can't see it lasting. The economics around it cannot. No, be they'll probably pull out. Unless you, um, unless you're somebody like Elon Musk, of course, like you just charter the whole damn aircraft, you know. Yeah, I, I, I think personally, the other side would be they build the plane. They sell the, the image rights to Ravel, who make models, and they get their money from the merchandise. <laughs> <laughs> Just a thought. It's, it's going to happen. You're going to see a Ravel version of... Uh, and I'll have it. Boom over to it <laughs> I'm sure it probably already exists. Yeah, probably. <laughs> no, I keep looking for the Starship, but it, it's not out there yet. Yeah, probably. Probably. But, yeah, it's... It's one of those ones where, um, you know, we'll just have to wait and see. I mean, like I said, it's about three or five years away, three to five years away before we even see the test flight. Yeah. And it's not due to come into service until it's like 2030, I think. So until then, we just have to kind of sit and sit and see what Wait, happens. I guarantee it's not going to be for the likes of us. It'll be for... It's going to be elitist, isn't it? It's going to be. Yeah. Well, business, it, it might, business it, it may come down to the next <laughs> yeah. level of the... Of the, the you know the top business class, come. You know, not the not first, but maybe business class. But yeah, you yeah. know, it's not not mums and dads going to New Yorker on it. That's for sure. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely right. Yeah. That's it. So, yeah, nice watch. Yeah, whatever. Right. And, yeah. and I think with the um, suborbital flight, what um, Transatlantic Allison was saying, and, and yourself there, Luffy, wouldn't you need something like a flying suit with inflatable legs to stop? G forces and things yeah. like that with something I'd, like that. I would demand it. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Can you imagine turning up at Manchester Airport in your um, in your night t shirt and your night trainers and them giving you a flight suit with inflatable legs to get you on this plane? <laughs> yeah. You can imagine him like nappies. rolling up rolling up to the nappies like, just in case you want to get up and have a pee. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 You can imagine someone rolling up to a terminal and being like, yeah, I've turned up for my space flight. Yeah. 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 <laughs> <laughs> Where do I get these like sweet trainers from? You get me? <laughs> but yeah, it's, it's is weird. This, is this your case, sir? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Back <it> yourself. Yeah. <laughs> you know me, I'm well Man, I was, that, that would just be mental. Just, just yeah. to be able to do that. I think what we'll do um, is we will do one more question that will come in in the chat. So the next question that I see come in, we'll answer. We'll ask answer that question, um, and then we'll we'll begin to wrap the show up. So first question I see that comes up in the chat, we'll get it answered. It's got to be sensible. We can't just have yeah. you know random random stuff. So yeah. But yeah, it's it's like I said, just gotta wait and see, wait and see what happens. There's there's all sorts of concepts like. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, give me five quid. No. <laughs> <laughs> Super chat, damn it! Uh, no, well, I'll, I'll tell you what. While, while we're waiting for this sensible question, and she's put the song "Rocket Man" comes to mind. What's your favourite aviation-related song? Oh, flipping hell! <laughs> <laughs> 
Flemmy Chili Mew. I'm not getting it. No. Um, <laughs> um, Ace is high. Being a Maiden fan, I'll have to say Ace is high. Next. If we're going to go, if we're literally going to go aviation related, uh, yeah, see, look, this is why I look, friend of the show, I was literally about to say, learn to fly by the Foo Fighters. It's a classic video. It's the first one that came to my mind when, it, when you think about aviation. Video. And I, was, I would obviously mention like U2, but I don't like U2. So like, <laughs> Yeah, uh, I'll have to. Learn, but yeah, learn learn to fly by the Foo Fighters would be probably my favourite. I think it's the first bit of Frank Sinatra. Oh, I'm hearing feedback. Oh, who's got Whoa, who's playing it in the background? Yeah, uh, I'll have to. But yeah, learn learn to fly by the Foo Fighters. Ken, that's you. That is what? Are you, just, are you listening to this in the background? Yeah. Oh, hang on, hang on, hang on. Sorry, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's fine. Yeah, chuck it on. Is that better? Yeah, it's good. Yeah. Yeah. technology. Yeah. No, I know. Yeah. Right, go on, anyone, else, anyone else? Anyone else for your favourite uh, aviation theme songs? I'm nearly fifty-seven, you know. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> what? 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 Bit of Frank Sinatra, the old "Come Fly with Me," always a classic. Standard, yeah, <laughs> yeah. I can't Tell think of one. It's got quite, a few, you know, quite a few people talking. You've got Hingle with the Top Gun theme, of course. Uh, Kenny Loggins. Um. Um, 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 Darren Smith leaving on a jet plane, go blind. Yeah, yeah Darren out, Smith with learning to fly by Tom Petty. Oh, yeah, that's that's a good one. I don't mind that one. Uh, zero one task zero one with one that I actually used for my Instagram story the other week, the uh, which was <laughs> airport by the motors. I don't see any Bruce Springsteen on there. <laughs> Shut up, you tart. <laughs> up, up and away by the fifth dimension. You just googled that, didn't you? Yeah, no, I have to. I was looking for something, <laughs> was looking for something oh, totally look, different. Right, to be it's honest. There, look, Floyd learning to fly. Yeah, uh, Ian, you might want to have a word with your daughter because she's put the wheels on the bus. <laughs> yeah, she's Luke, just, just messaging Bruce now, okay? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> with a new song. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Louise Sylvia Wood saying "Fly on the wings of love." Yeah. Uh, Transatlantic Allison with another corker saying "Fly away" by Lenny Kravitz. Yeah, nice. I was thinking of that one. What's that one with? Um... <laughs> that one's just come in. It's brilliant. I, I believe I could fly by Orville the Duck. <laughs> <laughs> Cracking. But I can't. Fantastic. All right, let's get let's get one last question here from Hingle. Um, going around the room, top three airports on your spotting bucket list. Steve, you first. Um, as we've just seen now, I would like to go to Amsterdam. That that would be awesome. Um, JFK is the other obvious one, and the not so obvious one is uh, Anchorage in Alaska to see a lot of the uh, cargo movements. I think that would be decent. Good shout. Good shout. Uh, Ian. Um, does it have to be to, well? Yeah, it has to be today. I mean, I'd like to go back um, thirty years and have a look at Kai Tak. That'd be it. Yeah. Um, oh, yeah. Couldn't do that now, though. No, you couldn't do it now. No, but I, I think everyone will. will you still sit on the mountain. There's nothing yeah. stopping you doing that. <laughs> I experienced it in the flight simulator last week. I think it was or a week before. And let me tell you, like, hats off to the pilots that did it because it was difficult. <laughs> Is it St. Martin where you fly all the top of your head? Oh, one at a time, one at a time. Sorry, <laughs> sorry. We do have a pipe. Well, he was in here earlier that actually flew that approach on here, Clive. Clive Everly. Oh, okay. I, I don't know if he's still, still on. He was on earlier, but um, mm. yeah, he, did, he, 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 he flew that approach. Quite tech. I'm just going to bring this one up before we carry on with the uh, with the top three list. Jack Rose has been very inventive and gone Manchester, Barton <laughs> City, and Liverpool. <laughs> Stay close to home. <laughs> Pretty much in a yeah ten mile radius. Yeah, good choices. Uh, so yeah, Ian, what was yours again? Um, I, I think I'd like to go somewhere like um, I've been watching some Miami. That looks really nice. I'd like to go there. Mm. Uh, it's, is it Princess Juliana where they come flying over the top of your head? Oh, yeah. That's a good shot. Yeah. I'd like to go there. 
Yeah, I don't know. I'd like to go to a really good cargo airport. So Anchorage then. But not cold. Somewhere I can wear shorts. <laughs> East Midlands. Yeah, I was gonna say yeah, no. East Midlands in summer. I yeah. tell you yeah, I tell you what. Um yeah, some, somewhere like that in, in the sum, summer's evening. That'd be that'd be great. Somewhere mm. like East Midlands, yeah. Can't beat East Midlands in the evening. Mm, not absolutely. summer's evening anyway. Yeah. Especially from six PM until about three in the morning. Mm. Definitely. Be, uh, Spot on. Yeah. yeah. Um Let's go with Loopy now. Um, free airports that you could spot at. Uh, out of choices, choices, choices. It's got to be Frankfurt, um, Amsterdam, and I think. Uh, yeah, I'll probably go with Anchorage as well. Anchorage getting a little love. Yeah. Um, Ken, you and then I shall do my three. Okay, I'm going with Tasca. Area 51, first and foremost. <laughs> if as long as we have an, a view from a van. <laughs> um Who said that? Who said that? No, they, they, actually get a, they actually get a daily flight at Area 51. Yeah, no, I've, 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 yeah, I've actually got photos of the um the 737s yeah. going from yeah. Vegas to Vegas, yeah. Right, oh, so, Janet. Yeah. Yeah, Janet. Janet, Janet yeah. Um, but yeah, I'd Jerry fifty one would be quite interesting. Probably. Um Anchorage depot because it's just simple seven seven four seven. But then was it oh, what, what's the one the famous one? Is it St Martin's or something? The, the, the big one where everybody gets blown yeah. over. Yeah, St. Martin's. I just like to yeah. film people being stupid enough to stand behind an aircraft and watch them like fly down the beach. So you wouldn't be watching the planes, yeah. you'd be sitting at the side with your camera, like watching yeah, this. Watch yeah. Brilliant. <laughs> Brilliant. Brilliant. You'd have your hand on my beer, wouldn't you? Just stop sand blowing in it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah. A bit of card. Bit of card down the side yeah. of the lens. Be a map. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> be a can. No. A can. Brilliant. Be a can. Perfect. Wonderful. So very good choices, I think, so far. But I would go for maybe Madeira. No, would I? Definitely St. Martin. I'd like to do Innsbruck, and I'd like to do... Um, let's say Luxembourg, I think. Luxembourg would be quite interesting. Oh, oh, we've been to Luxembourg. We, when we went to Frankfurt, <laughs> when it was foggy, we drove overnight to Luxembourg. And it was still foggy and it was still nothing. <laughs> <laughs> so you've been to it, just not seen it. Yeah, I've stayed, I've stayed in the hotel by the airport, could hear everything taken off. Nothing. Brilliant. Well, <laughs> really bugger all. And then, and then when we were driving through Luxembourg the next day, because nothing else to do, um, we ended up kind of going down some wrong roads and we actually ended up in front of the royal palace with lots of guards with guns oh god <laughs> it was like ah okay <laughs> reversing. Yeah, no. beep, beep 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 vehicle reversing <laughs> get your guns ready yeah <laughs> no brilliant fantastic good choices some very good choices there i think we got around the Round the room with that, so yes, yeah, so good, good choices. Uh, right, oh, Lucla. go on in. Oh, Lukla, yeah, good <laughs> yeah, Lukla, good shout. Gibraltar would be on there as well, I think. Mm. That'd be interesting, mm -hmm. yeah, good shout, very good shout indeed. Right, so, um, we are going to begin to close the show this evening. So, uh, firstly. We'll say a big thank you to everybody watching. We'll just keep that brief because we're still not finished yet. Yes, but we are going to go into uh, the next part of the show as we wrap up where we do some shout-outs. Now, we've completely forgot to warn Loopy about this, um, where we do some oh, shout-outs at the end of the show to people, friends, family, loved ones, etc. blah, blah, blah. Um, and unfortunately, we are going to put you on the spot. <laughs> <laughs> um, so if you want to come <clears throat> Some people, some shout outs, um, and anybody in the in the, in the <laughs> chat that's got any, um, anyone that's got a shout out in the chat, um, do post them and we'll put them onto the screen as we do ours. Um, so, Loopy, take it away. Uh, friends, family, um, <laughs> um, <laughs> I like to thank my manager, no, um, <laughs> all the guys in airliners live, obviously. Um, 
up there. That's pretty much it. Thanks to Ken and everybody. And you guys, of course. Wonderful. Hosts. Massively appreciated. Thank you very much. All right, Ken, over to you. Sorry, I've just been distracted by Darren's comment, cocktail bar and end runway. <laughs> There's this. <laughs> <laughs> I also like his uh, shout out. Hello, Mum, feed the cat. <laughs> no. I've got a response to uh, Greg right there. Um, Luke, where did you get your name? By the book. Yeah, by the book. Yeah. <laughs> Brilliant. No, no, just thanks to obviously, obviously all, all my guys uh, help us out on the, uh, obviously on, on the social media, but more, you know, just as much on the magazine. Um, we have such a fantastic team that um, writes <laughs> and do photography for, um, <laughs> yeah, uh, write and for, uh, have, uh, do the photography for the magazine, make it something special. A shout out to Charles, and probably the biggest shout out, and this goes to Sarah because she's the one that has to send all this stuff out to you guys. So, yeah, that's pretty much it, I think. From my point of view, good stuff. Um, you weren't even listening. You were like feeding the. Cows. I was no. I was cutting my cut. I was cutting my shutting my curtains. Those <laughs> nails. Cut me. <laughs> <laughs> Shut the damn curtains. <laughs> I've got ears. I can listen. <laughs> <laughs> no, well done. That's fine. Uh, right. Let's well, well, and also, obviously, thank you to everybody that's actually bothered to actually. Watch all this nonsense. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. 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 Totally all forgot this about nonsense. Yes, sorry. <laughs> yeah. yeah, totally forgot about all the viewers. Um, no, that's all right. Uh, okay, so we've done Loopy, we've done Ken. Let's go with Ian. Um, yeah, massive shout out there. Yeah, un yeah, unprepared. Yeah, just a massive shout out to you, Tom, and to you, Steve, for another good show again tonight. And a massive, massive shout out to Ken and to Luffy as well for um, what's been a lot of fun tonight. It really, really has, and we should do this again very soon. It's been absolutely fantastic. So, I'm massive shout out to everyone who's been in the chat tonight, and um, <laughs> a massive shout out to everyone. <laughs> Sorry, Hingle, mate. Don't just don't even go there. All right. <laughs> <laughs> oh, he's back. Come here, come here, come here. <laughs> I'm, hey, I'm there we go. I'm, yeah, and, and to massive shout out to Ken's dog. There you go. Nice. <laughs> yeah, it serves you right for being such a bastard all week. All right. Oh, you're going about me swearing? Sorry. I didn't mean to swear. <laughs> <laughs> well, there goes my no. money to the show. No, I've let him out four times already. I've got to go and let the dog out because Sarah's on strike now. <laughs> <laughs> we'll keep you in, but I'll mute you just in case there's any swearing. No, I'll lose my money. Um, Jack Rolls has very kindly put £1.79 again, again, saying thank you all for a fantastic show. Love you all. So thank you very much for that. Still time to get Super Chats in if you want to do that. Um, you can do before we go off the air. Um Right, uh, Steve, I think it's you now. Yep, lovely. First of all, um, Lupe and Ken, appreciate you coming on, and Ken, for your, your continued support, allowing us to access your uh, your channel to stream on as well. We appreciate that. Um, everyone in the chat, particularly Airliners Live, who I know plugged us today, and I always enjoy watching your uh, stream on a Sunday when I've woken up with a, a thick head because I've had too much to drink, so you just <laughs> brought me right. <laughs> um, Ian and Tom, as always, and uh, yeah, shout out to the uh, well, unfortunately, soon to be ex sister in law and my little niece and my uh, friends Lucy and Edward, and afternoon today. So, I don't know, you're probably not watching, and that's me done. Thank you ever so much. Good stuff. I want to just very quickly. Um, give a shout out to a very loyal follower of ours. I've uh, been watching since probably the very beginning. Rob Brown Plain Spot says, Any chance for a wee shout out for his channel? Uh, 1K subs, a happy boy tonight. Do go give him a Definitely. follow uh, or a subscribe on his YouTube channel. Um, do it. He, <laughs> do, yeah, it. do it. <laughs> do it. Uh, do it now. 
Um, yeah, uh, do yeah, do like I said, do uh, give him a follow. He's he's been very loyal to us um, yeah. over the last was it now fifty eight episodes that we've been doing. Mm-hmm. Um, so any love that you can show him for his YouTube channel will be much appreciated, um, and I'm sure his content won't let you down. Yes, I know. I haven't got to that yet. <laughs> um, <laughs> Celebrity uh, squares. <laughs> I'm going to put them up there. Jack rolls. Jack rolls is letting me off being a Chelsea fan, but we didn't deserve that loss. Well, you still lost, and that's all that counts. Sorry, Loopy. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm getting used to this week by week. I, t- <laughs> <laughs> I tried not to talk about football. Jack rolls brought it up. Blame him, not me. <laughs> um, get fired. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, and then obviously, like, yeah, Darren Smith saying thank you for the head crew. I like that. Um, where did I see it just then? Uh, he also put uh, get Charles Kennedy on here. He's supposed to have been on tonight. Um, but did you say he went away for business? Um, he was um, supposed to be in the States. Unfortunately, it now turns out that his visa wasn't um, up to date or something. Oh, so. damn. I don't know whether he got there or not in the end, but yeah, he will be coming on soon, won't he? Oh uh, yes, yeah. As soon as as soon as he's absolutely free, we'll get him straight onto the show. So yeah, 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 absolutely wonderful. And I just want to give a very big thank you to Airliners Live who put eight ninety nine wow. into the super chat. Say great show, guys. Well done, Loops. Thank you very much um, for the donation, Airliners Live. Much appreciated. Thank you, guys. Yeah, cheers, guys. Yeah, yeah, thank you. Yeah. Mm. Much appreciated. Thank you very much. Right, let's quickly go through my shout outs. Oh, yeah. And sweet, the dog's getting moaned at again. <laughs> but we'll go with it. Um, <clears throat> first, thing I want to say thank you to uh, Loopy and Ken for. Um... Sorry, guys. Come no, back, right. back. Loopy and Ken for being on the show tonight, providing us with some giggles and some good stories, especially with uh, Loopy's timing. Um, being a roadie to Iron Maiden, very, very interesting to, to mm. hear the side of things and that. So thank you to you both. Um, and of course, to, again, Ken, for allowing us to stream onto the channel um, and broaden our horizons here on the podcast. He's still getting <laughs> 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 um, Fantastic. Uh, I'll quickly do this. Uh, Ian and Steve for um, being wonderful again on, on the show. Um yeah, the, the show wouldn't be the same without you guys. Um, it would be here, but it wouldn't be as funny as as, as it is. So um, big shout out to you guys. Everyone that's watched, everyone that's subscribed over the last 24 hours, um, do please consider subscribing to the channel and help us out uh, getting to some more milestones that we want to reach. It's a, you know be much appreciated. Uh, we'll go through the socials in a second. Um, and, of course, uh, key workers... Um, around the world and everything else like mm. that, uh, which all deserve a massive shout out. So yes, uh, <laughs> got love coming in for the dog at the moment, Ken. Um, no, Darren no, Smith no. would like to know if the dog is eating Sarah. Uh, he was. He was. <laughs> Not uh, Hingle is asking uh, or saying that the dog <laughs> is um, dog is fuming for not being invited on the show. The dog might be uh, going to a new home soon. Yeah. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, Jack Don't Rolls. Jack Rolls is asking if Loopy has an Instagram. Uh, no, uh, yes, he does. I, know, I don't know anything about it. Don't know anything about it. <laughs> <laughs> I, um, my uh, personal manager deals with all that. I, I don't touch really? any of it. There you go. So he does, he just doesn't use it. I've got one. <laughs> We've been a scoop race on this. <laughs> yeah, no idea. Fantastic. In fact, I've got two. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> one with having two different emails, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> oh, dear. Fantastic. Right. Okay. Let's leave that there. Otherwise, we'll be going on and on and on and on. So we'll definitely get both of you back on again soon. It's been a lot of fun. I'm sure we could dive into some interesting topics as well um, while doing this. But uh, now we will say our goodbyes next week, we are hoping. Uh, it's <coughs> in the work, so I'll mention it now. But again, it might change next week. We are hoping next week to get the Speedbird TV team on the show. Okay. <clears throat> which will be a lot of fun. Um, considering the amount of people I've just been told um, wow. that are supposed to be on the show, we might just max out the amount of people we can have on the show. Um, yeah. 
So if you thought this was key, I took trying to get words in with five people. It's going to be a lot worse next week. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, so it's going to be interesting. So uh, we will say our goodbye. So fingers crossed next week we'll have Speedbird TV on the show. But uh, we'll start off with the guests first. So uh, obviously I will just mention this. Don't go anywhere when we say our goodbyes because... There's an Quickly. after show party. Yes, meeting. young man, go for I've, it. I've just, got a, just a quick... Um... Loopy, Loopy Newhouse. That's your Instagram, Loopy. Is it? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, Loopy dear. Newhouse. Yeah. Yeah. Actually, I'll tell you what, before we do say goodbyes, let's just quickly run through social media if you haven't done yet. So you can find us Loopy on Twitter. World the one. With yeah, I, 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 I know I've got two. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's Loopy, got Loopy World One. Because that's not weird, trying to find out what his Instagram is, and he doesn't even know what it is. Yeah, I've got... So I have got two, but I don't... I I know nothing about him. I keep getting these messages come out. He's getting (laughs) notifications in Facebook. He's he's like, pass it on to Antonio. He can do that. I'll just show the social medias on the screen. Yeah, People can read it. It's fine. Loopy World One, your um, Instagram. Fine. <laughs> That's super He's not our stat man for no reason, Ian. But yeah. <laughs> <laughs> just, 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 just <laughs> find it anyway. Thanks for talking about Ian. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but anyway, uh, yeah, so on the screen, we've shown uh, the social medias and everything else. That's fine. Uh, we've shown Twitter. We've shown Facebook. On the screen right now is Instagram, but you can also follow Steve on Instagram. Uh, and you can also follow Ian as well. Steve, do you know how Instagram works? Um, just about, but... Yeah, uh, I don't have a manager to sort it out, so I've had to learn it my own way. Yeah, <laughs> you know more than me. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, can, you, can you send Antonio my way, please, as well? <laughs> I'll get it sorted. I'll have a word. Was he the guy that did the logo? Yeah, he's probably watching. Yeah, well, yeah I'll send him over. Oh, my God, yeah. Well, he's not been in the chat. He's kept himself very quiet. Yeah, I'm not surprised, really. <laughs> There we go. Yeah. yeah. There we anyway, go. So, yeah, so everybody. It's been great fun. We've, we've put on the Instagrams and Twitters and Facebooks and stuff and also put up Visions International as well. We deserve a lot of love uh, for, uh, like I say, allowing us to stream. And, of course, no, we support you guys. Tom, we support you. What you do. We, lo- we love it. Good stuff. <laughs> Don't forget to subscribe, like, and the other bits. <laughs> <laughs> no, Luke's. You're struggling now. You haven't got your, your robot bot thingy, haven't you? Just <laughs> yeah. 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 I can't believe you're a moderator. <laughs> I, <just don't> think <laughs> I can't believe he's a moderator. Yeah. <laughs> I've spent can't time with him. Is. <laughs> Do I have a face tube account? <laughs> <laughs> Darren. Yeah. Oh, dearie me. <laughs> dearie me. It's all getting out of hand now. It's all getting out of hand. Right, let's quickly get off. Let's get out of here. Um, so, much. yeah, so we're on uh, Sunday night next week, 7.30 p.m. Oh, no, we're not doing – no, Speedman aren't on next week. We'll think of something. It's fine. We'll let you know on the accounts and everything else. So we'll, we'll come up with something fun, I'm sure. But for now, let's say our goodbyes. So, like I said, Ken and uh, Loopy don't go anywhere when you say goodbyes because a lot of people tend to just leave. Uh, so we'll have a little chat afterwards just for about five minutes or so. But let's go with Loopy if you'd like to say your goodbyes to the people still watching. Goodbye to the people still watching. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. It's so, like, <laughs> so short and simple. I love it. Well, that's all you can yeah. do. But yeah, no, thank you, Loopy. We'll see you around at some point. Next time, definitely. Cheers, mate. <laughs> All right, Ken. Yeah, massive thanks to Luke for stepping up tonight because obviously it's supposed to be Charles. Blah, blah, blah. Well done, mate. You know, we've Excellent. been friends for a while. Excellent. Really, yeah. really enjoyed that. Good stuff. Fantastic. And thank you, to, obviously, thank you to everybody that's actually watched this nonsense. So <laughs> maybe get a life. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you ain't wrong there, honestly. You're not wrong. <laughs> You're not wrong. But Ken, thank you very much. We'll see you again at some point, no doubt. You're right, mate. Oh, well, let me just change this back now. <laughs> <laughs>
there we go. We'll change that back to normal. Uh, right, uh, let's go with... Uh, well, I'll keep it. Keep it for the end. Ian, you first. Um, yeah. <laughs> Thanks, everyone, literally... for... Uh... Yeah, I was just stuck for words, Ed. It's been a lot of fun tonight, so thanks to everyone for um, contributing. Thanks to Loopy and Ken and yourselves, and uh, see you all next week. Wonderful. Uh, right, in the way that Steve knows how. Steve, if you'd like to say goodbye to everybody still watching. Yeah, just uh, thanks to everyone who watched. I, um, I forgot to mention a, uh, I passed a, a little milestone on my Instagram this week, so thank you for everyone who, who follows on there. I do Really appreciate that. And uh, yeah, here we go. Um, all right, then. Cheerio, my lo lovelies. Stay safe, Steve. And until next time, make sure you buy the t shirt. Have a good week. Cheerio now. Bye bye. <laughs> Gets better every time. Honest to God, I love it. Uh, final thing for me to say, like I say, um, thank you, everybody watching, who subscribed, who's. Uh, done super chats and everything else thank you so much it's always appreciated um but we'll see you next sunday 7 30 p.m for what will be another fun show don't know what it'll be yet but we'll come up with something fun until then have a fantastic week look after yourselves stay safe and we'll see you next time Bye bye <laughs>